Hey guys how are all of you beautiful people? Hope all of you are doing fine and yes this is a new series Marvel Earth 999,000. An unknown entity waved the supposedly limb looking arm, knocking unconscious a fated but unfateful person sending him to an unknown space and time, dreaming about the thinnest and lackluster red string. A man with a soul unique for himself, unknown if it's better or worse than everybody. Story unknown or is it? So let's start without any delay. T. Shaker was giving his speech when he noticed his son jumped at him and then they both got blasted by the explosion. T. Shula was too late, his father, the king of Wakanda died in his arms as blood of his father covered his hands and clothes. He swore to get revenge as this is declaration of war with the kingdom of Wakanda. He saw a red-haired woman sat two meters away from him and said her condolence. Tishala in my culture, death is not the end. My father was very peaceful but I'm not my father. Natasha there is force that is tasked to bring bonds. Tishala interrupted her don't bother Romanov, I'll kill him myself. He walked away ready to hunt bonds with his Black Panther suit. Natasha and Steve talked to the phone and she warns him to stay put or else someone will arrest him. How can Steve stay put when his best friend is getting arrested or maybe even killed in action? Steve's stubbornness has been enhanced by Super Soldier Serum along with his other perks. He's the type to die trying than just watch his friend get besieged by his enemies. In a few hours. Three enhanced super soldier had a chase that create a commotion by their abnormal speed and strength, one guy's flying with a jetpack joined the chase to delay a man in a black suit that is similar to Black Panther. Later the suspects are identified as Steve Rogers aka Captain America, the patriotic hero who have fought and risked his life countless times for this country and the world is arrested. This is not the first time Steve is branded with the title of a criminal. Next is the known bomber who killed and injured the meeting of UN getting apprehended as criminal with no chance to get free. Lastly was unexpected to most people as he is the Prince of Wakanda with high-tech suit and an enhanced individual the same as Captain America. The three are sent to the headquarters detained for the commotion they caused while Bucky Barnes. The suspect is locked to a cell soul for individual like him. Baron Zemo disguised, got closed to Bucky while cutting off all the power of the facility and proceeded to brainwashed bonds and become Winter Soldier. Several Russian words are needed to be said in order for Winter Soldier to appear. When Bucky was on the verge of breaking the cell door, Baron Zemo finished reciting and Winter Soldier waited for orders. Report soldier. Ready to comply. While the power is out, Barnes is on a rampage. Everywhere he go is someone knocked down. This facility cannot contain the Winter Soldier, unfortunately for him Captain Steve is there to retrieve his best friend. Winter Soldier met and defeated guards, Falcon, Tony, Natasha and Agent Carter. Tishala almost got the Winter Soldier but he got away and escaped to the rooftop to ride the helicopter. Steve predicted his intention so there it is, the iconic Captain America vs the helicopter. Winter Soldier has no choice but to crash the helicopter together with Steve. As they survived that and both falls down to a water, they will disappear with only Sam Wilson knowing where they go. Baron Zemo already escaped. His cunning mind already made plans for everything and surely his next plan will break the Avengers apart. The chaos Winter Soldier made inside the facility slapped the face of the people who were managing this building and letting an important and dangerous criminal out in the world. Steve, Bucky and Sam had a good talk at a abandoned factory with Bucky telling all he knows about the other Winter Soldiers. Steve wanted Tony's help to find the mastermind of this chaos but Sam figured Tony will be tied because of accords. We're on our own now. Steve proclaimed. Not really, 
I know a guy Sam replied. Tony Stark is having a bad day as Steve, Sam and Bonds are missing. He knows they are hiding Bonds from the government but he's still waiting for Steve to call him to give up Bonds to the UN for his crimes. Natasha escorted Tishala to his car you're sure you can find him. Tishala our resources are considerable. Natasha yeah, it took 70 years before the government find Bonds. Tishala look at her, for sure she knows something you know where they could be find. I know who does. Tony Stark have investigated where would Captain be and he check all possible locations where he can find Steve and there are less and less place where he might go and hide. When he got an intel from Vision that Clint took the Maximoff twins from the house arrest, he think that following this will lead to Bonds and Steve and talk it out. He thought of the possibility that Captain is getting ready to force his way out of this country and hide from the government until it cools down. He doubted or maybe never considered that they may be someone controlling the situation in the dark to tear apart the Avengers. With Steve taking the twins out and leaving Vision out, he already chose his team, team who chose to sign the accords and Steve who believes that their freedom is more important than being supervised by the United Nation. Tony shared what he finds to Rhodey and help him invite a person that can have a chance to prevent Steve from leaving. The only place Steve has a chance to go and leave was the airport where the Quinjet is boarded. Leipzig Halle Airport The Leipzig Halle Airport is an international airport in Schkuditz, Saxony. The place where they docked the Quinjet, Steve is ready to force his way out which may result in a physical brawl between his faction who agreed to Sokovia Accords and Captain America's faction. Natasha already invited Tishala to help arrest Bonds and Vision is already on the team while Rhodey is inviting someone from the government, Tony just need one more person and he already knows who to call but in cases like this, he should have invite one more person. Tony flew to New York, Queens where he will meet a guy who have been recently acquired fame on the internet as a vigilante. He kept forgetting the name well he should ask him when they met. Tony visited the home of the guy and met with a mature and beautiful aunt lucky guy who married her Tony thought. Conversation with the ladies have been one of his many talent. May Parker is her name, her husband died of mugging and she has no idea her nephew is one of the crime fighting vigilante. The door opens while Peter is going in directly to his room when he notice a guess, his idol Iron Man Tony Stark. He heard his aunt him being scholar by Stark Tech Industry. Tony and Peter talk to his room and Tony told him his real objective that is to show him a clip of Spider-Man swing in front of a camera. Peter want to deny it but Tony showed him more clips of what Spider-Man is capable of. He's also an enhanced individual. Peter demanded its fake video from YouTube but for Tony he is not a good liar. Tony found the suit Peter used as Spider-Man. So you're the Spider-Ling. Crime-fighting Spider. Spider-Boy he kept making fun the kid's name as he wait for him to admit it on its own. Tony looked at the clothes Peter wear as his eyepiece have a clever designs but looks ugly and dark. He didn't know Peter has to wear darker glasses to make his vision more normal as his senses have been enhanced. Tony sit in the bed to talk to Peter that there are someone who needed to be arrested and he needs support. It's difficult for him to ask a kid for help in arresting someone like a super soldier like Steve and Barnes. When he thought about this kid is also enhanced unlike other normal teens. What is really cool is this webbing that has remarkable tensile strength, who manufactured it? Tony asked. I did. Well, your suit is in need of upgrade Tony already thought that this kid will be a good part of the team. The two talk more about Peter and know his story. At the last piece of conversation Tony will contact him of where and when he will fly out this country to Germany, 
so he just need to wait for his call and his bodyguard will flew him to the location. While Tony is creating his team to prepare for Steve's arrest, Steve, Sam and Bucky met with Agent Carter to get their suit and prepare for battle and force their team out of this country. I just touched down to where the location Clint gave me but I may be a little lost. I focus my ears and eyes to find Steve and the others, not far from me is Steve, Sam and Bucky riding a low-key car. I followed the car a little excited because I remember what will happen here. I hide when the three met with Agent Carter, Steve got out of the car to greet Agent Carter. They had a small talk and with Steve taking the initiative, kissing Sharon on the lips while his two buddies and one little subordinate is watching him taking the kiss like a man. The people hear clicking sound of a phone's camera, looking at the source of the sound, they saw a mischievous young man with his phone out taking a picture of the moment when Sharon and Steve are kissing. Sam and Bucky can't scold him as they will also do that if they have a camera while Steve that nothing is wrong with what I did. Just as Sharon will ask me to delete it. I already told my excuse. I mean, you're both single right? So there is nothing wrong with just a peck on the lips he he my mischievous laugh is heard by all of them. When Sharon left with her car she eyed me and I thought I got the message so I nodded and mouthed the words while signing OK with my hand OK, I will send you the photo. The four of us got on the car to meet Clint and the twins with the other guy Sam told about. I've met Bucky Barnes and I immediately talked to him Hello sir, my name is Kane, I'm a big fan, can I get an autograph? I took out my notebook card to ask for signature like the rest of the team in the past. Bucky seems to be in disbelief by me asking him his autograph, Sam told him don't worry, this kid have asked all of us for our signatures, this kid is always excited to have an autograph and you've been famous since World War II so maybe he reads something about you in the museum. He eventually signed high signature to my notebook card and not long after we got to the destination, Clint and Scott is out to meet us and Scott's enthusiastic appearance shook hands with Captain America and greeted Sam and nodded at me and Bucky. Scott's funny interaction with Captain Steve and his mouth greeting everyone except me and Bonds as they didn't know much about me. Steve also prepared to meet Tony's faction. We should get moving. The airport announced that it is now closed and this indicates Tony's faction is already here. The team suit up and made their way to the direction of where planes are boarded. Half an hour later, all the people have been cleared and the airport is empty of people. Steve got ready to meet with Tony as he walked forward. The team's position is already on the ground and I'm behind with Captain Steve while Tony and Rhodey in front of us to prevent us from leaving. Hear me out Tony, the doctor, the psychiatrist he's behind all of this. Black Panther jumped high to stand on both side and greeted Captain. Your Highness Steve greeted back. Tony anyway, Ross gave me 36 hours to bring you in. There is 12 hours left can you help this brother out? Steve you're chasing the wrong guy. Tony your judgment is askew and your buddy kills innocent people. Steve and there are 5 more out there and I can't let the doctor get there first. Natasha Steve, you know this might happen, are you really gonna force your way out? Tony I've run out of patience and shouted his signal to Peter. I already noticed Spider-Man but Captain Steve have not yet give the signal. The group are arguing but Steve is buying more time for Sam to find the Quinjet and get them out of here. Peter greeted everyone and Tony has to quiet him down. I saw Tony running out of patience but he also knew Steve's stubborn will is enhanced by the serum. He's just angry that they need to fight I'm trying to keep you from tearing the Avengers apart. Sam's voice is heard to our earpiece as he finds where Quinjet is. Steve gave his signal and Clint tear the webbings off Captain's hand. With that, 
the battle began as Scott Lang aka Ant-Man kicked Peter and returned the shield to Captain Steve. Tony flew to where Clint and Wanda's located as Clint is a great pilot so he needed to prevent him from getting on the plane. Tony didn't see Pietro with Wanda Wanda, where is your brother? Clint shoot Iron Man to distract him and Wanda throws multiple cars at Iron Man and then ran away from Iron Man. The battle began now that everybody need to fight for their own causes. I just watched and waited of when will Vision strike, my goal is to prevent him from striking Zrodi's arc reactor. Steve fought with Tishala as Tishala want to revenge his father by killing Barnes. Move Captain, I won't ask a second time. The arrogance of the prince is still with him especially he is outside Wakanda. He considers his country the most powerful so it is right to be arrogant as he has the tech and resources to back it up. When the two got closed, Captain signal me and I use my optic blast to push Tishala. Rhodey used some kind of baton for subduing enhanced individual and strikes Captain but easily defended it on time. I saw Spider-Man goes to fight with Falcon and Bucky while Pietro is following behind. A certain ghost ambush Pietro striking him while not ready for that ambush. The ghost quickly hide again and Spider-Man pounced to the other two, kicked Falcon and stop Bucky's vibranium arm. Wow, you have a metal arm, that is awesome dude. Pietro and ghost fought each other as one is fast and the other can phase through. Two overpowered ability can't hurt each other while Falcon and Bucky are getting beat up by Spider-Man. When Falcon sends Spider-Man outside the building, the ghost immediately hide and go back to regroup. Quicksilver help Falcon and Bucky with the webbings and also get out to regroup. While both factions are grouping up, Tony looked at me and asked you know this will brand you as a criminal, right? Your anonymity will no longer work. I shrugged my shoulder and said my peace come on Mr. Stark, I'm just a half member so I am here to prevent injuries that will further tear this team. Look Mr. Stark, I can be a referee for both faction as I don't want to pick a team, you're both my savior and benefactor from saving me that day and providing me with a place to stay and learn. I positioned myself as both of their allies so I will not attack anyone but just save if someone is in danger. I know you both have reasons to fight but I don't want to persuade you to stop, I just want to say, Avengers can be considered my home and I will just stand aside, I insist on my freedom to choose, right Captain? I looked at Captain Steve and he smiled at me and nodded. It's not every day that I will speak my thoughts as I prefer to be quiet and keep my thoughts to myself. So knowing my gratitude to them and saying that I look up to them can be a good word to win my position in the middle. Tony also nodded his shell head and Natasha look at me making my own decision for myself. As my mentor, she knows our personality so she's proud that I could learn from both Steve's stubborn attitude and Tony's way with words. I flew to a tower to watch thinking I should have brought some snacks. Captain Steve's faction consist of him, Bucky, Falcon, Hawkey, Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver. Iron Man's faction have him, War Machine, Black Widow, Black Panther, Spider-Man, Vision and Ghost. Ghost is from government invited by Rhodey to arrest Bucky and the others. Vision created a line using his laser and joined with Tony, with Spider-Man, Black Widow, Black Panther on each side and Ghost just appeared from the ground yeah, like a ghost, her uniform is also white. Steve's lineup are more normal as only Falcon used technology as his jetpack wings as the rest are enhanced individual targeted by the United Nations supervision and control their activity as Avengers. The two faction run into each other as both are not stopping. At the center the second battle begun, I'm using my phone to record this battle to watch for later and in the future. Maybe my sons and daughters will watch this he he he, my smile widen when I thought about the future. 
Captain America and Iron Man met and have a hand-to-hand -hand combat and the others t vs Bucky, Hawkey use Arrow as support and not to kill, Wanda just throwing things at War Machine and Vision, Spider-Man vs Ant-Man as they are both talkative just a faithful encounter between a spider and ant with enhanced abilities having a go at each other. The most unique fight were Quicksilver and Ghost. They are having their own fun while phasing through and quick movements. Bucky and Tishala are arguing and fighting as one blame the other for killing his father while the other one is insisting he has been framed. Hawkey and Black Widow once again fighting, this is not the first and certainly not the last. Wanda interrupted their fight as she throws Black Widow and said to Hawkey you're pulling your punches. Clint just looked at her and did not say anything to rebut. I had to go down and knock her head with my knuckle and reminded her of something hey little girl, hold back a little will you, of course they will pull their punches, they are lifelong friends who have known each other decade ago. Just support and don't hurt someone too much your power is very powerful, you know that. I go back to my seat and continue watching while recording everything. Not totally everything as the fight keeps bigger and the distance are needed to not blow each other. At this rate Steve's team will lose time and won't get to leave as they still chasing the doctor who is also Baron Zemo. Sam made a plan that they will stop Tony and the others so Steve and Bucky can leave safely with the Quinjet. The big plan was to create a big commotion and that big was Scott Lang, when he transformed. I focused my camera on his battle and got a good shot of what happened. The diversion is successful as Ghost that plans to follow and stop them from leaving, but Quicksilver prevents her from leaving as he learned the way Ghost's power work and found a way to let Ghost stay with him and let Captain Steve leave with Bucky. Vision used his laser to cut the the tower I've sitting at without care about me. Hey Vision dude, that's rude. I shouted at him. Vision replied I apologize, I will make up to you another time. I'm still recording, I'll remember what you said. I said to him and continue recording and I almost missed on Iron Man, War Machine and Spider-Man knocking out Giant Man with teamwork. Wanda use her ability to carry the tower vision cut to cage the Quinjet. War Machine had to use a more lenient weapon for Wanda and used the sonic wave, Wanda stopped her magic and covered her ears. When I saw that one of Wanda's hand is bleeding, I used my optic blast to Rodi's weapon the sonic wave on his wrist, Rodi nodded to me as he also noticed the blood on Wanda's hand. I checked her but didn't find her ears bleeding or injured. I looked at her while she's smirking at my face. TSK I can only click my tongue at her cute and cunning strategy. She injured her palm so that it looks like she's holding back due to injuries. Natasha have been waiting at the front of Quinjet as she believes what Steve said to her that the psychiatrist was fake and is all behind this. Black Panther silently lurked behind Captain Steve and Bucky getting ready to strike to kill Barnes. He's counting on Romanov distracting the two. But Natasha stunned him and made an excuse I let you know where to find him but killing is not the deal. The Quinjet takes off to the sky with Steve and Bucky as the only people who leave and the others are staying. Rhodey and Iron Man followed the Quinjet and Falcon also follows to stop them or buy more time for the Quinjet to take the stealth mode but Vision wanting to strike again with his lasers. I shouted Vision stop but still too late, Vision's reaction is too fast and the laser is an instant. Falcon avoided the disaster but Rhodey still got heat on the arc reactor making the suit useless. I flew to my fastest speed and grabbed Rhodey's feet and Tony followed to the ground. I lay Rhodey not too softly on the ground and Tony checked if he's okay and alive. Vision apologized for his mistake and Tony forgive as he is thankful nothing bad happened to his best friend. Tony knew the risk of this battle so he's not that angry at Vision because he also learns from his mistake.
Ghost already contacted Mr. Secretary Ross that Steve and Bucky got away while others stayed and ready to be arrested. Wanda, Pietro, Sam, Clint and Scott got arrested by the military. I am an exception as I did not participate in the battle, but I still assured Wanda to be patient and she will get out of prison soon. The five will be delivered to the middle of the ocean prison where some of the most dangerous criminals are prisoners there. But I'm still contemplating if I should follow Mr. Stark to find Steve and Bucky and interfere with their fight. I'd rather not interfere to their emotion and it's not my place to mind their own business. I don't want to be called nosy or sticking my nose to everything. I'd rather be abroad doing vigilante work. I saved my recording with dozens of copy and another dozen cut up to clip by clip and some are hidden for future reasons. The army along with Secretary Ross came here to personally deliver the prisoners to raft in the middle of the ocean. I don't want to be noticed by this man so I left with Spider-Man aka Peter Parker. We introduce our names my name is Kane, codenamed Cold Amber. Oh yeah, it sounds so cool did you get the code named from your eyes? I'm Peter by the way also known as Spider-Man. Peter is really talkative as we started from introducing ourselves and giving each other's autograph and laughing at our jokes. As we were talking Ghost appeared in front of us and notify us that Mr. Secretary wanted to meet us both then disappear again as she have the ability to be invisible and intangibility. What does that old man wants to talk about? Come let's go to Mr. Tony Stark ask him for help. I inform him to let Mr. Stark know our situation. Agreed Peter also nodded. When we get near to Mr. Stark we heard him talking to his friend Rhodey about where to find Steve and Bucky and their only only clue was Sam Wilson who will be sent later to Raft. We inform Mr. Stark our situation that Mr. Secretary wants to meet and talk with us. I immediately thought that this will be piece of cake for Mr. Stark. Mr. Stark, I want you to shield us from the government. We are still young and we don't want to be trained as weapon and tools that government use to complete missions and tasks like a soldier. Me personally valued my freedom the same as my life. Mr. Stark looked at us and nodded this young man and also Peter are still young and they have great potential for the future so don't let the government break them. Tony leave this to me, I will have a talk to him, you should go home and have a rest. When we finish speaking, we turn around and go back to rest. I advise Peter on the way, Peter, you should be more smart and learn more of social interaction. Adults are cunning and scary so don't be too naive, we're still young and you're still in high school so don't try to fit in yourself on the world of adult, just enjoy your life and be a friendly Spider-Man in your neighborhood. I don't how many he will understand to what I said or if he even plan to listen and follow my advice, well that's his life anyway. I should also do what I want. Time to go home and rest. Getting back to the hotel, Krista open the door and greet me with a kiss even though I nearly get involved in the battle, my uniform has been changed to normal clothes on the way here. Coming in. I heard someone cooking in the kitchen I guess her aunt is already here, I should greet her we walked to the kitchen met her aunt. Krista's aunt was from her mother's side so she almost looked like each other, I would have believed she was her mother if I didn't know any better. I said hello and she responded by eyeing me up and down and told me to wait in the living room and watch something until she finished cooking. Well. I'm the one who pays for the hotel why do I feel like I'm the guess, I just laughed it off and walked to sit on the couch. Watching the news about celebrities and people who have tendency to get addicted to fame and become arrogant, what I'm watching now is again another slightly famous celebrity getting into trouble by causing a ruckus on some building. Oh, is that building is this hotel? I recognize some place that looks similar to this building on the lobby, what a small world. 
I continue watching TV and learn some not so important news as the media didn't tell the people what is really happening to the world. My butler dot I keeper is much more reliable than this press and journalists. I'm not saying all journalists are not trustworthy but the blame are on the company executives. They don't want to offend big people so they don't show their faces to the public news. So journalists will be more focused on getting news that the company will deem important to get bigger wages and promotion. Getting back to the news, vigilantes are getting more and more ballsy as some vigilante are seen on the day beating some people. I believe that they just witnessed a bullying of some gangster so they suit up to beat them back but the media are portraying this vigilante as dangerous and had no regard for the law and ignore law enforcement. This world is changing as more superhumans are being discovered but maybe there are already superhumans in hiding but Iron Man decided to begin the exposure and the Avengers help them become more confident on being a superheroes. There are S.H.I.E.L.D. dealing with these superhumans who uses their ability to become a criminal and some of them are still hiding because they could not control their abilities well. I've been watching TV for an hour now and they should be done now as I am getting hungry from the smell. The smell was so good I already seated my butt on the chair beside the table full of dishes. Auntie's name is Helen, as she looked at me admiring her dishes and complimenting her smell home, I should brush up my good points so she will approve of me for her niece I thought. Even though I'm a superhuman with a powerful ability, my personality is still normal. I prevent myself for being too arrogant thinking I'm different than normal people and bath myself in praises. Ah, I'm getting goosebumps thinking becoming super famous. Most superheroes has their own great minds that help them solidify their belief on helping the world and becoming their own name as superheroes. Captain Steve has enhanced everything about him that's why his justice is unbreakable. Thor has a responsibility as a prince of Asgard to be a protector of nine realms. Black Widow wanted to make amends as a former assassin. Tony was also making amends as his friend died in front of him and he vowed to be a new man and help the world a better place. Peter Parker has one of the saddest reason, with great power, there must also great responsibility. Peter's Uncle Ben teach him the words of wisdom that will lead to Peter becoming the amazing Spider-Man but he has to be alone as his identity brings danger to those around him. Back to the meal. As we were eating having small talk and Auntie Helen kept asking me information about me like what's my job, why do I have so much money and the like. Well she has the right to ask, I bought Krista a whole floor of a building and gave it to her as her home and now staying at a fancy hotel, this requires a lot of money. It seems Krista did not tell her I'm a superhuman, that's good. I replied to her every question respectfully to earn another point. I work at with the Avengers, and you know, me and Krista met when Sokovia is in crisis. I've helped the Avengers do some things and they paid me salary. You should know Avengers, right? They are heroes and the money they paid me is credible. I told her that I only have connections to the Avenger and not part of them. Maybe she thinks my family have a friend from the Avengers organization so there is still with me having tons of money when I'm just 20 year old guy. I said to her Mr. Stark gave me a car and Captain America even had a sparring with me, I showed her some photos I took of me with the Avengers and showed my notebook card filled with signatures from the heroes. My current state is like a kid showing his favorite toy so maybe that get the weight off on her shoulder as she thought I'm part of some criminal organization doing illegal things to earn big money. Well she's not wrong to think that, almost half of the Avengers are in prison and I do a slightly illegal things to earn money, but she doesn't need to know that as I don't consider myself as bad guy. We talked as we eat and Aunt Helen and I have a good talk about many things including her delicious dishes that I kept eating, 
My metabolism allowed me to eat as much as I want so the food at the table and the plates are cleaned as I praise her again for being a good cook. We had a good time at the living room while watching TV and Krista was beside on and Aunt Helen is on another couch. When Krista mature in the future like her, beautiful and attractive, a caring auntie, and a very good cook she will be a great wife but let's think about that in the future. The TV is on the news channel and reporting on more news that will capture people's interest like politicians scandal and celebrities meet up like award show and the most talk are super people especially superheroes and some vigilantes. Many called them heroes for protecting the cities and many still called them lawbreakers as they should not interfere with the law enforcement's work. I remember Kingpin having his ways on police and even the mayor can be influenced by him. Daredevil and Uncle Frank didn't contact me yet to deal with Kingpin or maybe they already created their team without me. Well that's better, that's my plan by the way. Now that soon Avengers will be teared apart, the two faction will separate their path as Captain Steve will continue to help the world by purging criminals in the dark as Vigilante and Tony will dissolve the Avengers temporarily. Black Widow will perform her own mission to do what she want in the Europe and be chased by Taskmaster. Maybe there are Kingsman or 007 in the Europe, I mean Me 6 is real. I should visit there to have a vacation while looting and punish criminals in the process. The next day, we had a sumptuous breakfast that Aunt Helen cook and we drive Krista to the university. I parked the car on the parking lot and said goodbye to both of them. Krista will continue her studies in medicine and Aunt Helen is working on a nearby restaurant as she said, she will have a long vacation here. She wants to get her own apartment to not avoid disturbing but Krista and I insists to live with us as she is a great cook and Krista to have a company whenever I have tasks. I left the car with Krista as she was the one who uses it often and it's not like I need a car to travel. I said I have a task that will require a couple of weeks before I come back. Walking on the city of New York looking at everything. I will miss the Avengers but I need more strength to get ready to fight in the Infinity War. I remember Doctor Strange peeking at the future to see if we will have a chance to beat the Mad Titan. As I was walking, my surroundings suddenly change, everything is like crystals and then became mirrors. I didn't panic as I know the person who wants to meet me, a sparking portal in front of me revealed itself. The mirror dimension is just in case I panicked and begun fighting in the middle of the city. There is a person in front of me wearing a yellow clothes like a monk but the quality is very good, she looks peaceful, I mean the ancient one, drinking her tea while waiting for me. Her head is so smooth, is it real that the more bald a person the powerful a person gets I stoked my thoughts as this sorcerer can guess my thoughts just from her experience and intelligent. You're thinking of something rude, young traveler she looks at me with inquisitive eyes. I can't read her thoughts so I just go with the flow, it's not like I can beat someone like her older than everyone except the Eternals and Wu. First of all it's not rude to use my own brain but it's if it happen that you read people's mind and second I am not traveler, I am kidnap or slap unconscious until I woke up here. I am not complaining to anyone and I liked it here that my previous life. I know that she wants to know something about how I get here but I am also curious. Ancient One still has no major expression I've been meaning to have a talk to you about your purpose here in this world but you've been very low profile. She continued you seems to not be surprised to meet me. I rolled my eyeballs at her I know this world is different. What more a sorcerer who can do any kinds of powerful tricks? I just know that I am from Earth similar to this but not much change maybe I'm from parallel universe. So what is your purpose now? Your faith and future can be read like others but what you do is always disorderly and in disarray. Will you be a threat to this realm like others from other other dimension? 
I didn't know ancient one will go directly to the that topic. Whoa whoa whoa, hold it right there. I don't have that much ambition to become the almighty one, I still prefer to be normal with superhuman capabilities so I can protect my priorities and I am not like the others from different dimension as I said I'm also from earth similar to this so I will protect this world in my own way I had to get her off my back and not supervised me like the damn UN full of hypocrites politicians. Ancient one thought of something if you consider yourself as a protector of this world, will you join us and become a sorcerer? So this is your purpose, what a cunning old woman I thought but voiced my other thoughts I know I have superhuman physique that is very suitable for sorcery but I don't like studying right now, maybe in the future I'll think about it. She seems to already know my answer. I've been meaning to ask. Can I have offspring or it will take me a long time you know? I suddenly got curious about myself. Ancient one just look at me not saying anything, this is frustrating. Okay, in exchange for this question, I will tell you a name suitable and powerful enough to learn your sorcery. Equal exchange, clever. My answer to your question would be, why don't you try to other women that's also on your favor? This ancient one did not give him a real answer but I still have to follow the equal exchange. Her name is Wanda, beautiful but dangerous so it's up to you to convince her, oh she's in prison right now. I told her Wanda's name to teach Wanda control her powers instead of her powers controlling her to become the dangerous and threatening Scarlet Witch. I've been drinking her tea since I sat down ask if she's willing to give me some of those leaves. Well ancient one is not a miser and she gives me a box full of those tea leaves. I thanked her and promised I will not cause too much trouble to this world. She send me back to where I disappear and I continue walking. I hope she doesn't have to supervise me for long, well she needs to focus on the injured Doctor Strange. If she can convince Wanda it's great to have her a classmate like Doctor Strange. I go back to the hotel leaves the box of tea leaves and just take some small amount to drink later on my journey. I flew to loot in other country with the help of my butler dot I keeper. Hey keeper, find some politicians who have participated in some evil organizations. Keeper gave me information of dirty politicians and filter the names leaving only names that really needed to be punished but get away with it because they have money and power. I flew to the nearest target and when I look at the mansion, this damn asshole is having a party, this will be difficult. This politicians are using taxes that they stole, some are from embezzlement but most of it all are illegal and now they are having fun. I should at least give them some back pain as a gift. I'm still thinking of not killing, maybe this is what Superman thinks. He has the power to become a god but still chose not to kill people as he had been lucky to have a good parents who raised him with righteous heart. Me as someone born from a civilized family, I am thought how to be a good person and not to be with people with bad influence. In my previous life, I can say I'm slightly spoiled and my parents never really made us suffer but discipline is the most important to learn in the family. We learn self-defense class but never even been into fight but that valuable lessons learn there have been with even on the other world. Killing someone is not easy to do and taking a human life is still hard for me now that I have capability to just end a life with one punch. I thought in the past. Killing is easy as much as the movies and stories shows but those movies are scripted and every situation is directed for viewers not to get traumatized. For some who is just watching and reading about killings of human life with his own hands. It is easy to say the guilt that will follow can take a lifelong nightmare for an innocent person, that's why soldiers who have been to battlefield knows what PTSD does to their comrades. A person killing someone with their own hands due to self-defense will follow them as a form of guilt. 
Only someone who has strong will or an insane person can take a human life and go back to proceed on their daily life. Yes, I watched people getting killed and even helped with that but who knows if that doesn't scare me, I remembered the blood but at that time I've conditioned myself on what's about to happen and it's not like I've watched it. I just look and get a glimpse and then ignore and carry on. Maybe if I get insanely overloaded, I will not be too different to Homelander. But I'm still aware of what I'm doing at my overloaded state so now I'm ready to start absorbing solar energy to power up my abilities. Back to what is currently happening, I saw the target getting comfortable, I picked a stone and throw it like a meteorite and bang plaque. I think a few broken bones will do the work, I hope his spine have a few damage so my work can be called success ha 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 my mind is still too evil. It's not my fault to think that, he used money and threats to bed girls that he blackmailed with her family, abused his ex-wives and even funds a orphanage like it's the breeding ground for the gangs he worked with. I keep on flying and throwing stones to the targets not killing them but they will have all the same injuries, spinal injury that will bed them on the hospital for several months and even wheelchair company can have new customers. Laughing at my own joke, I talked to Keeper about this target if where did he get this information from. Keeper said sire, most people on this list is known to have this crimes but get away with it by their connections and power and many people who knows this are rival who hid this information to fight them if push comes to shove for them. So you stole information from their computers? Yes sire. Most of the victims this people abused have been silenced and the evidence mostly are not enough to convict them without bail. Home, they are playing with the law, they are experienced on doing this that's why they can get away with their people and enact revenge to some people. The politics are complicated, the law favored those with class and money and the poor can only be oppressed by the law that's supposed to protect them. Some people who worked hard to change this are framed for more crimes or corrupted when they taste the power they are trying to fight. Capitalism, the world called that system. Keeper, investigate more of this but I want you to find the hidden people behind most of dark industry, if there is some secret factory, slavery on the jungle to work them to death and others like that. By all means. I head to the north. I don't know where did Tony and Cap fought but it's better not to interfere yet with them as Tony is dealing his own problem of his friend's best friend assassinated his parents in cold blood and being used as a pawn by someone to fight his friend. His problem is not for me to mind as I'm all things to do like right now. I only have my shorts, even my mask is set aside. I always my mask even if I'm not wearing my whole combat suit but now that I decide to absorb solar energy and to further control it. I let the sunlight touch my body as I breath in and breathe out, this is something I learned from Thor for a short time so I don't know how to perfectly use it. As I kept on breathing, the energy is circulating in every part of my body. It is slow but this is what the technique supposed to. I persist on doing this technique for several more times before I opened my eyes. Keeper, what time is it since I started? Sire, you've not been moving since 1 hour and 23 minutes ago. More than 60 minutes of focus, that impressive for me, but for Thor and other warrior in Asgard it is puny, I need to focus more, I only have 20 hours of sunlight as I am staying on the northern part of the world. I picked up where I left on, breath in, breath out. This deep focus continues on for 6 hours until a drop of sweat can be seen glistening on my temples. I already miss Auntie Helen's cooking. I go down from the mountain and saw a tavern that cooks food, I order a sumptuous meal and I was waiting of my food to be cooked while eavesdropping for information from some people talking. Maybe I can't speak the language but surely I can understand them. Most of what I heard useless bragging of friends bragging to each other. 
I noticed on the corner was a girl wearing baggy clothes with cap on her head. I noticed her because she's giving the same vibe as me when I want to reduce my presence and avoid attention. She looked at me also thinking that we have something similar. Her eyes glowed white light and I also use my optic blast but not to attack her but to show that I can glow my eyes too. I walked to her table and she was not too scared but waited for me to say something. My name is Kane. I am a superhuman who survived from the experiment from Hydra facility I straight away give my name while my mask is aside as this is gathering of people, having mask is asking for attention. She looked at me and said Hydra experiment. You are not inhuman. Well no, but I know inhumans, I've never met any but I've heard some. I admit without hesitation as I know Quake whose power is the same as Whitebeard's tremor tremor fruit. You know where I can found my kind. She asked warily. Kind. Aren't you still humans, even though you gain abilities unlike normal humans you're still not alien. You live here all your life and you have blood of humans just a little tampered on genes. I paused for her to take on my words and no, I don't know where people like you is as you're the first inhuman I see. She's a little disappointed to my answer but still look normal as she sees that I don't discriminate against her. Why are you here? Are you being hunted by some people? It appears that my question is spot on as she shivered a little. She nodded slightly as she asked you said Hydra experimented you. How did you get out? Oh, I've been rescued by the Avengers but I think the organization are temporarily disbanded. How about you? I took the initiative to ask her story as she's still a little wary of me. I got my powers in an accident and when I accidentally panicked, I think someone saw me glowed with light. I know I'm different and superpowers are not unique only to me but I still know what will happen to someone like me who has no backing. She told me how she started to run away. The food are ready and I invited her for the meal as I ordered many dishes. Come eat with me and let's talk ourselves out. We resume our chat when the waitress left us. As I was saying, when I just move my things. Men and women in black clothes told me they are FBI and want to talk to me. She carry on eating and telling her story I spotted a warning with my vigilance and escape using my powers, they chased me and I keep on running until they lost me. Maybe it was the Hydra who have been chasing you as they are only the most bold at chasing enhanced individuals. When we finish eating as we talked I asked. So what is your plan now? I've been around here just yesterday and you give the impression you don't have any money. I'm not making fun of you, it's just that's how you look like, those clothes are not your size and how you devour food is like you have not eaten decent meals since you are on the run and hide. I saw her face get sad so I quickly told my excuse. Do want to follow me? I can teach how to make instant and fast money I invited her on my journey as two people is better than alone. Sometimes. She grabbed her baggy clothes while eyeing me menacingly. To indicate that she misunderstood my words. No, it's not what you think I'm not that kind of pervert I quickly reasoned unless she misunderstood me and escape. I just want to say that I raid illegal base of some criminals and loot the wealth inside there I whispered to her even if she knows what I do, she can't copy it unless she has the same strength or she is a black widow. She thought for a couple of minutes while eating and nodded slowly towards me. She can escape from the chase of Hydra so she has little confidence in escaping again if something bad happen. When we finish our meal. I got up and walked out of the tavern and the woman followed a few meters behind me. We walked towards some store that sells camping equipment, bought tents, table and chairs, cooking equipment as well as bedding and futon. When the inhuman woman is still following me with perplexed expressions. 
What is your name by the way, you never told me when we were having a meal, I can't call you woman this, woman that. You can call me Lila what a short answer. Where are we going and what is this for? Don't you know camping? We're still going to buy some food. I said to her as we walked to the grocery market and pointed at the top of the mountain. There, we're going to camp and I'm still training so you can train with me if you're willing to, you know the more you train the stronger you can be and you can even protect yourself. She seems not suspicious and looks lonely, maybe the real reason I'm friendly to her was I pity her circumstances or just have time to get a student to train. I think her powers are similar to mine as her eyes also glow. And I've never trained alone, sometimes it's Pietro and Wanda but they are still in prison soon Captain Steve should save them and Scott and Clint will get house arrest. A company on training besides Keeper. I will have a partner in crime soon as long as she's not pretending to be pitiful just to backstab me. We shop at the market and she's still behind me following not too close but she helped carrying things. Not too much meat but bought many condiments and spices because we're going to hunt wild animals, something new to both of us. After that we go to areas with less people than to forest with no one to witness what I'm going to do. Okay, don't freak out, I'm gonna hold your waist and we're flying to the top of the mountain. She looked at me with confused eyes as she thought how are they going to fly without a vehicle, she thought and nodded then I grabbed her then float and slowly fly to the top of the mountain and Lila just look at the surroundings, they are really flying like it's against the gravity. Isaac Newton will blow his mind if he witnessed gravity doesn't apply in the future for all humans, oh maybe the Eternals met him and fastest teach about gravity, well it's not impossible. Newton is still a genius. We arrive at the destination at the top that have clear flat surface enough for a normal cabin to be built the surroundings have some trees that is not too high, it's on the right height for me. We should lay the tents and table and chairs I set aside the grocery to a box and proceeds to arrange the tents. Lila help herself and after arranging everything to each tent. We sat on the chairs and talked about the training my training consists of breathing underneath the sunlight as I can absorb solar energy for my body's nourishment so most of the time I'll be sitting there. You will be training by yourself and I will teach you some stuff and your progress depends on you as well as the results. She's a little grateful, I'm willing to help her unconditionally so she told her powers my powers allowed to create dagger made of light and I can also transfer myself like teleport to the things made out of light. Please show to me. Okay. She created a two dagger from both of her hands throw them at opposite direction, she created two more and throw again. After doing that she look at me touching Mei Chin and signal her to continue. She teleported to one dagger and then to other and the to other and then the last one, she create one more and throw in my front then teleported. She breathed slowly as that seem took a toll on her a little. I thought more about her powers as I observed her and to create a training schedule for her. Your powers is just not to create dagger, but to manipulate the powers inside you, the way you power works is like this. You subconsciously focus on creating a dagger to protect yourself and I think that's I talent I complimented her a little so she can take my next words. Your powers don't work with just talent but also hard work and training, the dagger you is an energy part of you and you should have felt it and the way you teleport was to blink beside the dagger and take back your energy I thought about what to say more simply it's like you have severed your finger then throw it. You can still feel it and when you get near it the finger will come back to and heal. So your training consists of exercises and internal energy manipulation, I will teach you my breathing technique but I just learned it, it also from someone so bear with me. Her powers are similar to mine as she can circulate energy all throughout her body to make herself stronger and train her control. 
I took off my coat and pants only wearing t-shirt and shorts and begin teaching her the breathing technique. For one hour teaching she's already crawling and can focus for more than 10 minutes. With that talent, I let her crawl by herself to teach herself how to walk and run. I told her to ask Keeper for anything she wants to know as he is my butler. I and I concentrate on absorbing solar energy and circulate it to my whole body including now my skull not my brain yet, let's start at something close before the brain. I have company so I might hurt her as I get on overload state. Days going by as Lila is still diligently training. She bought clothes when we shop again for more foods as she can cook so we also buy meat and poultry as we need more energy to supply our fast metabolism. Her physique is also stronger than humans as she trained harder than most athletes. Days passed when Lila already has proficiency in throwing dagger, I advise her to lessen the length of her daggers to make it more simple and easy to manipulate. Throwing dagger is smaller size and she has a knife that is solely used for closed combat. I've trained and sparred with her for close combat battle and she's quick learner, I'm lucky to have her my disciple. Next week is focus on training her senses so she can instantly move without hesitation. I'm quite happy to train her as white flash daughter of Minotona Mikaz. Hey Lila, have you ever watched an anime? Do you know Minotona Mikaz from Naruto series? I've seen it from somewhere but never watched it Lila replied while thinking what my deal again as I teach like an excited kid according to her. Keeper, show it to her but only episode with Minato not the whole series. Keeper showed her a hologram of Naruto episode with how Minato used skills and his technique to fight. See. See. You think you can do it like him. I got excited thinking she might have some talent to be the fastest like Minato using flying rage and technique. Kane, you know it's just an anime and some fights and techniques made it look easy to look cool, but I think I can perform like him but not as good as him, yet she voiced her thoughts and have some little confidence but the last word. I nearly miss it because her voice is so quiet but I still heard her that she can do that in the future. Well, I have confidence in you having the potential to become the fastest woman alive and your code name will be White Flash, cool right? Ha 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 I laugh at my antics and continue rotating the meat that is being roasted while still watching Minato. Lila look at me with complicated eyes. I noticed it but ignores that as it's not the first time and I can't read minds even if I can, I would never attempt to read women's as that is almost the same as Deadpool. Comment One comment We're training our technique one last time on the top of this mountain. We built a small wooden cabin to store all the equipment we will leave here. The training of Lila is short but some of her important foundations can be considered as well done. Her real talent, we will see later at her first mission, she is not as fast as Minato but she's learning, her dagger can be tough too with the energy inside her more compact. Her closed combat needs some training but as an assassin she has a great potential to one-shot her opponent at their weak points. The most intuitive powers she have was her eyes. I remember when we first met, her eyes glowed like mine but when I showed her my optic blast, she got little scared and embarrassed as she also thought we have the same use of ability. Her eyes was glowing because it is similar to flashbang similar to starlight from the boys. She can blind her opponents with her eyes but the good catch is she still has a normal vision so that's a very good advantage at close combat. Combined with her skills to strike the weak points, one second is more than enough to defeat her enemies. With our last exhale, like a real master and disciple, our eyes flash the brightest and use our optic abilities to say goodbye to this town. My optic abilities are far more threatening and dangerous than her but her eyes is brighter than mine and can blind opponents if caught unguarded. 
We flew to the location of the target as I hold her waist feeling soft from the wind blasting our face like a breeze. It's been a month since I'm incognito so I need to go back to see Tony and help Captain rescue the rest of the teams. As we get nearer to the target, I position her more comfortably to let her observe the place where her first mission will happen. I heard her heart beating like there is a drum contest so I asked her, nervous. Well since this is your first time. I didn't get to finish what I was saying as she interrupted me while not looking at my eyes. Eh. Eh. Yeah I'm nervous. As I was saying, I will let keep her with you on this to assist you, remember what I thought you, go good luck Lila. I let her down to the ground and she straight away run to calm herself. It's not like I didn't notice her feelings for me but let's not rush things and just go with the flow let her spread out her wings and make a name for herself and focus to taking care of herself. The raid was happening fast and it's not gonna take long before Lila finish as her opponents are just gangsters with guns and bullets who will be blind by her flashbang. There is flash everywhere like a SWAT raided this place that there is flashbang grenade every minute on random place. Twenty minutes later, Lila with a few sweats on her clothes but no dirt or blood, she got a huge sack on her back like Santa Claus on Christmas smiling while walking to me. I know she's asking for praise and I'm not miser for praising people worthy to be my disciple, beautiful and skilled. Are you sure you didn't kill anyone, I mean I'm just saying. It's still your decision to take a human life so I will not judge for that. I told her that even though I fought and raided many times like this, I've never taken life with my own hands to avoid guilt inside me. She rolled her eyes at me the way I rolled my eyes sometimes do you see any blood on me? I covered my face with female version of your mask and rather I use gauntlet to knock people down than destroy their vaults to steal. I mean loot the valuables and I also hit harder the boss than everyone else. I gave her a thumbs up come let's go to next destination, we still have long night. I embrace her and fly to the next location of the target slowly for her to get enough rest. She's no longer nervous and just look at the sky thinking if it is possible for her to fly also. Do you know Angelina Jolie? I asked her. Lila replied yeah, she's world famous actress after all. If you see someone who look very much alike her but blonde hair and most of the times wear white clothes, ask her is she's willing to teach you as a disciple I told her but it is up to faith if they will meet or Lila will remember what I said or Thena will accept. It requires right time on the right circumstances and tons of luck. She may be her similar power to you but her mastery is a grandmaster and be sure to be respectful to her. She's cold but beautiful like a goddess of war. Okay, I will keep that in mind. We for the rest of the night flew and fight until dawn. The loot collected are all Lila's belongings as we already about this. When sunlight shine upon us, we touch the ground of American continent. Lila is a little that we will get separated but is still acceptable since we both have our own life and responsibilities. I look at her eyes and kiss her on the forehead for couple seconds. This will be a temporary separation so she's bold enough to kiss my cheeks as well as peck at the corner of my lips. I smiled at her cheekiness and we said goodbyes to each other with deep embraced, well I felt her huge gratitude thinking everything is worth it. I flew away until we cannot see each other anymore. Being in the mountain for month training how to breath properly like a monk. Not many people contacted me because I don't make friends every time. I am walking early in the morning to the way to Krista's newly renovated apartment, I saw an open restaurant on my way and bought each of their delicacy for breakfast, I didn't get to buy some souvenirs for Krista and Aunt Helen as I was on the mountain. But some jewelry that doesn't look expensive but beautiful enough for the two women to like to wear one every now and then. 
Krista get ocean blue necklace and diamond earrings and Aunt Helen has the diamond cut laid bracelets and diamond drop necklace. It's expensive and beautiful but more on the side of Loki expensive. I hope the two women will like this gifts that Lila took from her lutes as she knows about Krista and Aunt Helen as we both spend a month together in the wild talking about our own stories. The apartment is close and as I got to the apartment complex, a guard stopped me from going inside and ask for my ID or do I know anyone from this complex. I said that a whole floor is on my name, well me and Krista's name are both on the paper. The other guard check it and come back to apologize but it's no big deal for me as they said there is some celebrity living here so they need to be more attentive to who goes in and out. The place here is safer than others but most of people living here are not too rich but definitely not those at the lower class so the security is good but it's not rare for celebrities to live here from time to time came here not too extravagant. I guess the celebrity who is living here recently got famous and requested the apartment complex to provide more security, what a bossy guy or girl, as long as they don't bother Krista I don't have to buy this whole building, maybe in the future and let the rooms on every floor to be the same rent and this can be real estate business. Just change owners and don't need to change something more major as Krista and Aunt Helen need neighbors too. I should make a plan for that, there is so many buildings like this here in apartment complex so minor changes are required. As I am waiting for elevator to open, the guy who walk out, looks very familiar he looks like Kumail Nanjiani from my previous world. We look at each other in the eye, I subconsciously take out my notebook card and ask for autograph sir are you the famous Bollywood action star? Can I have you autograph? I blurted out the question and he confidently smiled and signed the card. You have a nice eyes, bro. It very much look like someone I know Kingo mentioned my eyes. Is that a compliment, thank you sir. Me as a disciplined person, humbled and back off to let him go on his way and I go inside the elevator. Is he talking about Icris? He can see my eyes were different with just a glance or maybe it's just because I have eyes that looked cold and almost golden color. He is older than ancient one so he experienced this world more than her. I guess the celebrity living here have connections to him because he is too rich and famous to be living in apartment complex I just saw one of the Eternals, they are still in hiding until the time the Celestial is about to wake up. I walked out of the elevator and knocked to the modern door on this floor, there is not too many doors on this floor now that it is fully renovated. Aunt Helen opened the door and saw it was me, greeted me with a smile and helped me with the food I bought, fortunately she just started cooking so I woke Krista up and we ate sumptuous breakfast. We talked about what happened on this month and I also talked about them about Lila. I said Lila was a homeless girl that I took as a disciple to her some self-defense so she can protect herself and teaches him how to make money. They might freak out if I said I just took a woman as a disciple who has a potential to be the fastest assassin the world will see. The breakfast are delicious and we ate different delicacy of each restaurant so there are many dishes to pick from. We spend the morning on the apartment just watching TV and listening to some news and in the afternoon, Krista and Aunt Helen received my gifts as I said they are on sale so I easily got them to gave them to them both. We go shopping after that to buy new clothes, I chose simple colors and new suits, t-shirts and shorts along with underwear for normal daily clothes. Some swimsuits for both women and they suddenly decided to want to go swimming. We got a pool at the rooftop so we called the owner of the complex to rent the roof with pool for the whole night. We change our swimwear and I almost got nosebleed looking at the two women's swimsuit, they are more sexy and attractive than most supermodels.
I literally had to stay at the pool so Aunt Helen don't notice my bulging shorts as Krista already knows what is happening and just kept teasing me even dancing in front of me. I will get revenge to her tonight, as I vowed she will get satisfied and more to what I will do to her as I am on the mountain for a whole month. When the night is already getting colder, we go back to our floor, at dinner and Aunt Helen go back to her room. She's not that insensible not to know that the couple have plans for tonight. For a whole night, our activity goes on until dawn and wash ourselves then get asleep. No matter how open-minded Aunt Helen is, she is still blushing from the activity she heard as we are both passionate that people the next room is having uncomfortable sleep. Dark Ocean Around the Raft it's been a few days since I return and I contacted Black Widow that if ever Steve want to rescue Wanda and the others, let me join. This few days, I've requested for Tony a drone a little similar to Falcon's Red Wing. I've just got my drone I named Raven and joined with Steve to save the others, Natasha piloted the Quinjet to the raft in the middle of the ocean. There should be underwater mountain here for the raft's construction. It's so cool to see it as sometime it is underwater because of high tide and it's scary that we needed to dive to get to a secret tunnel to go inside. My heartbeat is already heard by all the people on the plane which is only Natasha, Bucky and Captain Steve. I smiled wryly as I said well, I have fear in dark ocean, only my body is enhanced, my will is not included so you jump first and I'll follow you Captain closely. The three smiled at me but didn't judge me as they are soldiers and spy that have a training and I'm only a normal person a few years ago. It's still great to know that I have the guts to face my fears, just not alone. When the Quinjet is on stealth mode, even people at the raft can't find it unless the jet land. The two jump into the water with only swimming equipment without any weapon, I followed closely. We're like fish on the ocean on how fast we swam to the raft. Finding the secret tunnel, I helped open it with my optic blast, getting in and again fixing it so no water get in anymore. Taking off the equipment, our clothes and even hairs are dry, our destination was the monitoring room to control it and no alarm goes off with our sudden appearance. The guards are piece of cake for us even without weapon. All of us super soldier but I am is a variant, going directly to the room the fight is a little bit more complicated as more and more guards patrolling in the hallway. Mr. Secretary very much known on how Steve treat his companions thus far gave the orders to always be alert and have a man on every hallway. No matter how many guards there are, knocking out them silently while avoiding cameras still took so much time. We need to move faster before the people notice that guards are decreasing. Bucky suggested he used guards uniform and create a scene for distraction so Steve and I will go straight to the monitoring room. A minute later Bucky already took the guards with him and created a distraction, three minutes is all we need, I also created as a distraction for Captain Steve to focus on the room. A minute later. Steve is done already and our opponents are down on the floor. We move on our way to Clint and the others. Thud plaque splat. Three different sounds of body falling to the ground as we come out of the shadow with only some who can feel Steve's presence and Clint who can see us clearly and we greeted the people waiting for us inside the cell. Tony Stark should have already read Steve's letter as he said if he need us, if he need me. I'll be there. Steve never broke his promise, maybe late on the date but never absent. Mr. Secretary Ross should also known the breach but he doesn't have the manpower to this breaching on the raft so he can only call Tony who refused his call and send his navy to see the situation on the raft. We broke the locks and get the people out. We found their uniform and equipment and Natasha has already landed the Quinjet at the roof waiting for us. Happily talking to each other inside the jet with the destination, Wakanda. 
We talked many things as they didn't know I took a photo of everyone when they are in their cells to keep myself entertained. In the future, they will see themselves in blue prison uniforms. The Quinjet followed the way that Tishala gave Natasha and passed through the shield that protected the Wakanda from the world's eyes. Maybe the Wakanda are jerks by not helping the continent of Africa and its people but the times and era are different so we can't judge their ancestors' decisions to hide themselves as the more people knows the resources they have war would be endless and more people will die in war as vibranium is too precious that even their small group of tribe leading the Wakanda betrayed their own just for profit. There are some vibranium getting outsold in the black market because of Insider and Klaus stealing the precious metal from the people who mined it. The vibranium is so precious because it is different than most metal in the universe and it does not rust it so it just need to be melted to be used on making other materials. Clothing, technology weapons and even medicine can be used by this metal so the price of this cannot be less than $10,000 per gram. Even Advance Kingdom of Atlantis is jealous of Wakanda's precious metal that they will send tsunamis from time to time. The Quinjet landed and Tishala and the Dora Millage greeted our arrival. We look at this spectacular city as our eyes keep scanning everything. Everything looks futuristic and everyone inside the city of Wakanda has free healthcare, everyone can earn money but they also keep the people competitive. The Dora Millage look in our direction proudly enjoying our wows and praise to their kingdom. Tishala smiled at us and invited us inside, he asked to make ourselves comfortable, what a generous King Shuri and the Queen also waited for us and we greeted her in return even the talkative Scott is silenced on how great this city is from architecture to technology and the precious vibranium here is the size of a huge mountain. Captain Steve, how long are we going to stay here? I asked Steve as he is our leader. Everyone waited for his answer. He look at Tishala and the soon-to-be king of Wakanda said you can stay here to cool your names from the outside, but if some of you wants to go home you are free to leave at any time. Can we have a stroll outside and buy things like souvenirs I asked. Yes, you can do that but you also read some rules inside the city, your skin color are very different here so some of the guards will follow you to avoid misunderstandings. What a thoughtful ruler. Well, I can only praise him as he really said it the most simple words and not to create a conflict for us and his people. Clint and Scott just bought a few things to take as souvenirs, Tishala said that the items we picked is his gift to them as a guest as we remember we don't have money specially this prison escapees. We ate food, choose clothes and other items as our souvenirs for our friends and family. Scott and Clint chose to leave tomorrow for their home. As Mr. Secretary Ross don't want to offend Hank P.Y.M., the suit is only confiscated and not studied deeply by the military and government. Who knows if Hank P.Y.M. did anything to the suit as to prevent others from studying the suit from the inside. Hank P.Y.M. was one of the smartest person alive even now and Scott is not very worried as Hank really made a backup for the suit. Natasha need to arrange for Clint and Scott not to be brought again to the raft and the compromise was house arrest for both of them as Clint is still considered as member of the Avengers and Scott have no crime worthy to be sent back to the raft and he is only a normal man or former thief without the suit. Bucky get ready to be rehabilitated with the help of Wakanda's resources and technology. Wanda, Pietro and I continue strolling in the city as we had fun playing. Later, Rogers, Romanov, and Wilson went to Syria and Lebanon to stop terrorists who were using Shitori technology for committing mass destruction, without attracting any public attention. They were there for much of 2017. A week later, we are ready to start the vigilante work, Captain Steve, Natasha, Sam, Wanda, 
Pietro and I are flying to Syria and Lebanon to stop a terrorists who are using Shi'tori technology to make a weapon of mass destruction. As vigilante works in the dark, we flew to the night and Captain Steve assigned our part, Sam, Natasha and I will go to Lebanon to strike the terrorist and stop their plans while Captain Steve with the twins will go to Syria to do the same. We drop Captain and the twins and proceeded to our destination. We have our communication device so we get separated to deal our own part. Our reconnaissance are our strongest skills, Natasha is an expert spy who can infiltrate anywhere, Falcon and I can fly and have drones. We started dealing the guards and patrol at the top silently, I just knock unconscious the patrols with my knife hand. Natasha already infiltrated the inside and moving faster will help a lot. After this, we just confiscated all the weapons that has a Shi'tori technology and call the authorities to arrest these people. The Shi'tori technology will not be given to the Lebanon and Syrian government as we are in the dark and they are in the light. They cannot find us as long as we don't want to be found. We did more missions like these. Some are easy but there are threatening missions that are difficult even for us six team work. We almost didn't stop a nation having a war, but luckily we are fast enough to prevent wars from happening. I talked to the that there is someone I know who can join our team, and that is Lila code named White Flash. We search for her whereabouts everywhere, we got a clue from where a country. There is a heroine who uses flashbang to fight bad guys and the people she saved spread her names and her purpose. One night, Lila again raided some people who did illegal activity and even though these criminals are ready for her arrival they still can't stop her or even see clearly with her speed and blinding light combined. When she just collected the loot, she saw a flying vehicle hovering over her. She's not too afraid that this maybe is here to catch her like those people who keep chasing her but she already taken care of the recent chasers. When I saw Lila not afraid and looking up at the Quinjet, I got a wonderful idea. Pietro, you can test her if she's enough to be part of this team, don't underestimate her but don't also injure her heavily or she will escape fast. I plan for Pietro to have a match against he for me to see her growth and for the others see witness her capabilities. Pietro straight on uses his speed to blur himself and immediately clash with Lila. The confrontation between them is speed and reflexes as both of them kept flashing on the ground. Pietro's speed can allow him to run on walls and ceilings for a short period of time. But Lila's throwing dagger and blinking is very dangerous as she is predicting where he might run and Pietro also knows that she can only teleport where there is a dagger light. But there is too many light dagger and she can even teleport while the throwing dagger is mid-air. Few minutes later, they are studying each other and to take advantage of their speed, the faster person will win this bout. When they are at the peak of heated battle. Quicksilver saw that she got tripped and this is a chance. It's already over, Pietro got baited. Wanda looked at me bummed out. Don't look at me like that, it's your brother who lost. As we were talking, Lila faked tripped and Quicksilver attack her quickly in front of her. Lila uses her optic flash and blinding lights blinded Pietro for a moment and that is enough for counter. With the dagger at his throat, Pietro reluctantly surrender. We got down and Lila saw us, startled by my appearance. I teased Pietro for losing and laughed. Ha 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 Pietro, you lose to my great disciple, you're no longer the fastest man alive. Lila surprised that we know each other and look at me. I introduce her to Cap and the others so Lila. You already know Captain America and Black Widow, this is Sam the Falcon, Wanda and her twin brother Pietro. This is Lila, an inhuman with light manipulation ability. Lila, do you want to join our team? We are vigilante Avengers working in the dark. I invited her straight on, 
I'm 90% sure she will agree to join. With the addition of Lila on the team, missions is not too difficult, we have more darker suit and Steve without his reliable shield is still a powerful fighter. Lila have her own uniform that is simple black pants and boots with white coat like a doctor. Her dagger now look like scalpel and the mask is still the female version of mine. I modified my mask and coat as the golden lightning on my coat is thinner and the mask have additional horns and headpiece. The headpiece and the horn was Raven the drone so yeah, it stays at my head like a cap. Steve grow his beard and longer hair, Natasha dyed her hair ash grey and falcon suit is modified a little darker in colour with darker wings. Wanda didn't change much but her colour have been deeper red as the years go by and her powers stronger. Pietro use the same suit with less blue colour but more on black and grey and use goggles and gloves. We resume our mission for a few more weeks and we decided to lay low again as our activity is getting noticed by some people. We take a couple of week long vacation to relax our nerve and enjoy our free time. Changing clothes and going back to US, with me were Wanda and Pietro along with Lila. Wanda and Pietro would want to tour in the New York for a while and I invited them to have a meal at our apartment. I already called Aunt Helen that I will brought my friends as a guest so she should get ready to cook as many as possible and we should be nearby so we can also help her cook and buy groceries. We settle inside and met Krista and Aunt Helen greeting each other. I introduce the people to each other since I am the only person both side is familiar. This is Wanda and Pietro, they are twins and we are on the same team since we all came from the same place and fought together for a long time, they are also from Sokovia, right? I only know that this twins had been in Russian country. This is Krista and Aunt Helen also both are from Sokovia. Krista is graduating soon from medicine and Aunt Helen works as a chef, make yourself at home. I invited them again properly. Oh here is Lila, my disciple. I taught her for a month and now she's on our team. Lila don't need long introduction as they already both know her as I told them some story last time. Aunt Helen and Krista as well as the others said hello to each other and Krista's eyes with Lila have a little but almost unnoticeable spark when they look at each other's eyes. Hey, what are they being competitive for when they just met a minute ago? We sat down in the living room and Aunt Helen with Lila helping her cook in the wide kitchen. We purposely renovated the kitchen wider than normal for Aunt Helen to move comfortably when Krista said her aunt is a chef and coming to live with us. Now that everybody is settled in the kitchen and living room. We just talked and watch as to pass time and have a meal later. Wanda, have you ever thought learning magic but more like sorcery? I asked as I remember ancient one should have already met Doctor Strange. Wonder magic. Sorcery. Yeah, you are powerful on your own right now but learning more about your power can help you control it and sorcery involved all kinds of things even dimensional creatures that sound like myths. I told her some information I know from my previous life. Krista is startled when she heard magic and sorcery as she is more believer in science's magic real. Like wizards with wands and stuff. Krista only knows that I'm different than normal people when I saved her when we met the first time but she didn't know we are more powerful than that. Yeah Krista, magic and sorcery is real but a little different than what the book shows. This magic is more like advanced science that people right now don't yet to discover. Think of it like this. In the past there are more advanced civilization that learn more about science but they disappear from the world and now people who don't know what they do called it magic and sorcery. I explained clearly as that's what I believe, maybe it's different but who knows, Earth have been formed billions of years ago. Can everybody learn that magic and sorcery Krista kept asking. Can everybody become a scientist.
I retorted. Learning sorcery has requirements but I don't know what it is but I'm sure Wanda is more than qualified. As one of the most powerful people who use magic, Wanda can be a threat to the multiverse if she decides to be the villain. Maybe Ancient One and Doctor Strange can taught her to be a good protector of this world. Doctor Strange himself is eccentric who has been time and time again almost failed to protect this world from creatures from other dimensions but he also saved the world more time than anyone knows. I'll think about it, for now relaxing and vacation is a must and traveling the world is not bad. Wanda is not as excited as Krista about magic. How about you Pietro? Are you still going to follow your sister? You know she can protect herself and don't need an overprotective brother like you all the time. Pietro has been a little down lately as I am not sure of the reason. I whisper to him how about finding a woman to cheer you up, you're a good looking and you can try to save a damsel in distress to get her, we have a long time to relax. I know him being a man who will chase women in the future. Pietro immediately cheered up to my proposal yeah, maybe you're right, I should go shop for clothes. Why don't you bring a woman first to shop clothes with you? That will earn you points. Okay, okay smart ace. Kane dear, can I also learn magic? Krista should be curious if magic and sorcery is really advanced science. We'll take time to visit the place if they want to let us in, you know wizards and sorcerers are eccentric. Oh, by the way this tea is from that place when I first visited that place. The tea we were drinking was gifts from Ancient One. We had a great time while enjoying the meal Aunt Helen and Lila cooked for us as we talked about many things and also talked about what is new Sokovia doing right now as we all came from Sokovia except Lila as she is from Europe. The week is spent eating, traveling and going to the beach. Our physique have been in top shape while Aunt Helen and Krista looked more beautiful than supermodel and Wanda has more conservative swimwear. People keep looking at our group and some people want to talk to the girls but stop by me and Pietro. We don't need to beat them up as this is public beach but showing them some strength can scare them easily. Our training and strong physique is not for show, Pietro and I also attracted girls, I mean women of all ages but some of them are ignored while beautiful women got a glance and a smile. Not to look arrogant. We just spent short time on the beach and we go to deep diving with the instructor to teach Krista and Aunt Helen the way. We three already learned it by still listen to what they taught us along with Lila. We are here to relax and sightseeing so we are cooperative not to make a situation complicated by our arrogance. The instructor seems surprised seeing young and rich people are cooperative and not arrogant. He taught Aunt Helen was the same age as us and she got teased by it by us. Well, she looks young as her sister, Krista's mother is much older than her. She should be only 31 this year but still look on her late 20s. Our deep diving don't have any danger because there is four superhuman enhanced individual with powerful abilities. At the night. We decided to clean up the area of gangs and make it safe place for the people in this community. We also go to other places from time to time and beat some gangster that have made business in oppressing the people in their area. What they got was bones broken and scratches with bruises that will leave them a nightmare. The more bad things this people did, the more broken bones they will have so hospital and clinics are busy for a whole week to treat this patient who are used to making trouble. Some of this people came back with more bones broken as they didn't learn any lessons, the situation have been on police notice but they don't have the capability to arrest as they didn't even know what we look like except wearing black robe in the dark night. Some people we saved and even hospital and clinics who made a lot of money from this patients called us midnights at first but the person who named us that get beaten up by the girls for choosing that horrible name. 
The people get the message from that person and decided to just call us dark heroes and we hide in the dark and do some hero work. While the authorities and police enforcement lost face as they cannot find any clue of who we were. Their job is stolen and the people don't even want to rely on them. The mayor of the city low-key condemned us but who cares about what he says? People will believe those who take action not some liars who keep criticizing their heroes. Fighting these little people don't give us much excitement so we started targeting people who have big businesses that are illegal destroying their buildings full of evidences. Some escape but their money making tools are destroyed if ever they come back, the police will arrest them to take back their faces. For another few nights. We kept destroying properties that police mark as suspicious but doesn't have enough evidence to warrant a search. We have been on the news, well our alter ego to be precise. We are being branded as danger to the public as we get more and more involved in this, we seem to offend people who has connections to the place we are targeting. Guys, this will be our last few days. So let's give them a farewell gifts I said as we planned on how to take this people out when our vacation is nearly done. Are we gonna kill them? Wanda asked. What? No, we don't have to kill just keep destroying and take evidence to send to anonymous helper so it can be used as proof and the evidence that will send them to prison for life. I said to her as some unknown hacker found us but did not know our real identity. I got her named in exchange for letting her on our team as hacker temporarily. I also give her my name only as Kane to reassure her that we will be doing our final work and the information will be sent to her and she will decide to expose that to all over the people and the law enforcement. As our last dinner, we got a sumptuous meal and we have to leave tonight. The team separated to four parts to do our things. We will beat people, take evidence and destroy buildings, we won't announce our departure so our name will continue to bring fear to criminals. We are almost finished the task and our only concern was how to blow up this building with causing explosion that will affect the surroundings. We are on ground when we suddenly heard a bullets whistling in the air. The silent sniper shot four times almost at the same time. Quicksilver just blur himself and the bullet passed through him, Wanda stopped the bullet midair and Lila shot the bullet with her throwing dagger while I just tense the part where I predict where the bullet will hand and did not move. The bullet bounced from me while we look at the sniper running away, Pietro run to catch him and to interrogate who is the sniper that can shoot four times silently. Pietro came back ten minutes later with some bullet scratches on his body. It seems threaten enough to hurt Pietro with his speed and skills. The sniper wear a mask with target on his forehead, I know who this is. So is Kingpin involved here as well? I asked him but he just kept silent. We do not kill so we will not kill you as well, how did you know we are going to strike this location and tonight? He seems sure that he can still live so he told us some information he knows, I've been hired to protect this building tonight in case you come, Kingpin allowed me to take this, I don't know that tonight you will strike here so I just shot when you are almost finish. You didn't answer the question Lila kicked him to the ground. Bulsi sit up and said no, Kingpin is not involved and he should be glad a competitor is eliminated. Okay guys let's go we do not need to blow this place, but just beat him up for revenge for shooting at us but don't kill him. We send the evidence and information to Sky and she will send this all over the internet tomorrow when people are paying attention. We said goodbye to Sky as Natasha get us with the Quinjet with Captain Steve and Sam. On an evening. We were flying on the top of the mountainous range as we are on the way to a probable headquarter located on southeastern country. The sceneries are both beautiful and nostalgic. I did miss this country as I live on this nation my whole childhood in my previous life. It was getting dark, the sky had an orange tint, 
and birds fly to their nests. We're almost ready as we suit up and brought equipment needed on this operation. Natasha, is the base really is hiding deep in the mountain range so masked? How often do they get supplies? They don't necessarily get supplies too often, they have workers on the farm to supply their food consumption. Natasha replied. What is their purpose for hiding deep in this ranges? Wanda asked. Are they hiding something too dangerous like making biological weapons? Wanda's guess is spot on. This trip will be stopping the people from making a weapon similar to virus that will endanger life and destroy everything instantly. The clue I got was from Insider who can't take the pressure anymore as they are scientists forced to make a weapon virus like to cripple the person and attack everyone nearby like a crazy person. Natasha reported what she got. So the way this virus works are convenient to strike a huge gathering of people, then making everyone fight each other and create chaos. I get the idea of the biological weapon. But, what is the purpose of the one who plan to make this? Pietro who is the targets of this weapon? Suddenly, Captain Steve speak, no matter what reason they have for making this weapon. Our main purpose is to stop this from being a danger to the world. The have already been proven to be effective to small scale of crowds tested to a lonely town next to this country. Natasha answered. The potential danger of this weapon if distributed to the whole world will stop even the economy of a country leading to its downfall. People will panic, because of shortage of everything create rally and even ousting the government will turn the country into a civil war Lila added. Then this virus will strike again as large gathering of people will fight each other to death and reduce both sides fighting power. Sam concluded. This is a weapon to take over a country while standing and watching on the sidelines while slowly taking the power to control the people and rule them unknown to the people that they've been played. Captain Steve remarked. As a patriotic soldier, fighting for his country is his belief but being a pawn of someone who has an ambition to rule a country forcefully is something he will not take lying down. The people who planned this is similar to Hydra and the Germans on previous two world wars. Steve continued. Are we gonna destroy all of those things or are we going to take samples? I asked as everyone look at me. You know, studying it to create a cure or suppression something, what if this is not the only place they make that? He has a point, this may not be the only place and we need to have a backup to counterattack this type of virus. Natasha also thought about it. Our meeting carry on until we started the operation and hop down from the Quinjet, I and Sam take flight. He studied the periphery and I started to take out the guards patrolling the top. The place is brightly lit up on the inside. It looked modern in the middle of the jungle but it has a complete farming system to keep up with the daily consumption instead of getting supplies from the outside world. There is risk being noticed so they first started to farm with the workers they took from everywhere, family of farmers for each livestock and vegetables with grains and stem vegetables. These workers are kidnapped but they didn't get treated bad or a slave, they have limited but peaceful life on this sanctuary, they have their own community and this place even gave them salary like a real workers. I should ask Captain Steve and Natasha not to destroy this community and let them continue to live their lives. Back to the work. Lila and Pietro is on the inside with Natasha, only Natasha is an expert in hacking so she's infiltrating inside with Lila and Pietro prevent the alarm going off and alert everyone. Captain met with Sam to take one side to fight the enemies who already noticed that they are being attacked. I took Wanda with me to the opposite side and deal with the people. Wanda let the workers on the farm sleep with her magic and I took out everyone else on high ground. My optic blast is very handy for long range as I just need to look to knock out people from far away.
gunshots and explosions sounded everywhere but there is no victims fighting only the people hired to protect this place. Mercenaries and private people armed from head to toe is still no match for us enhanced. We have powerful abilities and trained as well as experienced to have unstoppable offensive. Half an hour, the inside is already taken care of by Wanda, Lila, Pietro and Natasha. I sent Wanda inside to quickly finish the inside as the outside is not difficult as I alone is enough. After an hour of fighting and taking all the important stuff away from the place, the facility broke down from fire to not leave any trace. Getting on Quinjet, this mission is still exhausting but not the most difficult. I will be alright as long as it is not underwater mission that will require us to deep dive on the dark and scary ocean. My physique is evolving and even my eyes have more gold and no longer just a tint. Wanda's hair is the same, it is more reddish than Natasha's previous hair color. Pietro is the same, his hair completely silver now and maybe it will be white in the future. Captain Steve, are we going to Wakanda to send this stuff? I asked as Wakanda has the most resources to study this virus. Why don't you request a weapon like another shield just not the rounded like the previous? Captain Steve is already thinking about meeting his best friend again. Sure. Do you think they will accept if I ask to upgrade my uniform, maybe have a vibranium clothes? I asked them. My proposal was tempting as even Sam is having a thoughtful expression. Sam you can ask them if they can upgrade your wings like a feather like metal and stronger jetpack that will let you fly faster. The temptation is not easy to refuse but he's a soldier disciplined enough not to voice his thoughts without thinking carefully. Asking isn't going to hurt, what's worse can happen Natasha encourage us to ask. We notified Tishala of our visit as he greeted our arrival. Barnes is on a farm, he chose to live there as it has a peaceful atmosphere Tishala said. He's on his way now to meet you. What brought you here that you said is urgent? Natasha here, your highness, this stuff is a biological weapon that will be a dangerous weapon giving it to the wrong hand. The people who have been affected by this will turn crazy and attack everyone around him, but if a large crowd get affected they will attack everybody until only one survive. Natasha paused to let that sink in. We came here to ask your resources to make a suppressor or cure for this to prevent destruction. Captain Steve you should know the potential danger of this if it got out to start a civil war and chaos to a nation. Tishala we will surely do all we can and allocate our resources to create a cure for this thing and prevent a destruction from affecting our people. Tishala's first concern is his kingdom before everywhere else. They may be powerful but a war on the inside will cripple their nation and other country will wage to them if they don't distribute their technology and vibranium. Is there anything else that need to be assisted? Tishala asked. I raised my hand and asked your highness, you know our uniform has been damaged due to long time use on missions, so can I ask for a more advanced uniform for help? It took a full half an hour of thinking something that will not sound choosy and just sincerely asking for help. Of course, you all are our friend and this nation won't refuse our friendship, Captain, you can also choose your new shield. Tishala is very generous to us as we are the nation's first guest since a long time ago. I will find Shuri to ask for all your preferences. Captain Steve that's a great help, my friend. Cap already treated Tishala his friend since the other respect them to be his friend. Thank you, your highness. You're welcome, Kane Wright. Tishala nodded at me. Yes, your highness I nodded back. We rest at night inside our room. We had our lunch an hour ago. We chose to rest as we just finished our mission and some of us needed the rest mentally and physically. 
It's comfortable bed that feels luxurious because we are the guest. Captain and Bucky already met earlier and had a good talk. Bucky still doesn't have the vibranium arm. Maybe a year later when Thanos started collecting all Infinity Stones. The next morning was another good day to start practicing. I flew at the top of the building with Lila and practice breathing. We did that at the same time while other is getting up one by one. Sam already got up with Steve and are at the training room. We go spa one by one and everyone fought everybody until lunch time. Tishala and Steve go toe-to-toe -to -toe with their martial arts and experience both his master in hand-to-hand -hand combat and also super soldier. We had fun till the afternoon, when we did a few things while Natasha is reporting to us our next destination after we get new uniform later. At the sunset, suddenly the door opened on the meeting room. People of Wakanda came in with new boxes inside is our equipment. First is Captain Steve's shield that look like a black diamond shield on both his arms, it is made of vibranium and it is retractable to look like a gauntlet. Natasha get a new electric baton powered by vibranium energy that can be assembled to be an electric staff weapon. Some get a new jetpack that has red blade wings that can be used as weapon made of metal but lighter. Wanda had a new outfit that looked tight-fitted dark red robe with a coat and red gloves. Pietro got a whole new look with a speedster look that no matter how fast he is, the uniform won't get caught on fire. It looks sleek with silver color and silver linings and gloves on. Lila got a dark suit inside, dark pants and white windbreaker that is along with new mask same as before. I got with mine was a black pants and shoes with white shirt and a black windbreaker. The mask is the same but lower part is modified and the upper part the horns and glasses is the drone. Our team enjoy our new weapons and equipment that made our team more brand new and ready to tackle all kinds of problem. Bucky is still getting treated so he can't join us yet. We said goodbye and thanks to the people of Wakanda and resume our mission to saving the world in the dark. The heroes who saved the world in the light was the Avengers of Tony Stark with him as him as Iron Man, War Machine, Vision and the United Nation with Secretary Ross. On the Tony's side, them saving the world with the supervision of the government as they signed the Sokovia Accords. Many enhanced individuals already signed the Accords. The SHIELD's main goal is to find these people to arrest them or force them to sign the accords and to cooperate with them. Inhumans and other experiments survivor who've been enhanced or gain superpowers through accident is being monitored by the government and SHIELD. Daisy Johnson aka The Quake should already be part of Coulson's team with Raze's Ghost Rider and other team member that solve crimes caused by enhanced individuals. The young Peter Parker is swinging across the neighborhood solving small mugging, thief and helping old lady cross the road. The days as Spider-Man is boring as he can't get excited to fighting this way when he already experienced battle with other superheroes on the airport at the Germany. Texting and sending voicemails to Happy if he can get a mission as he was desperate for some action with his new suit given to him by Mr. Stark. Now that he is more confident being Spider-Man, he yearns for action like the Avengers not knowing that every mission is considered dangerous as accident and failure can happen every time. But Peter who is still young and naive needed a life lesson that will taught him to be humble. As the night when Spider-Man is on the job. Peter witnessed a bank robbery or atom robbery by people who wears Avengers mask. This people has technology from Sheetori that have been scattered during New York battle a few years ago. The technology is still crude but already impressive considering it is manufactured in the underground with limited resources. They needed money to support their tech industry and using the Sheetori technology to steal is the best approach this people can think since the government will arrest them and confiscate their things if words about this technology got out. 
the robbers fought Spider-Man in the Atom Bank and almost destroyed the street with that dangerous weapon that looked like energy blast used by Shitori. The video have been on the internet as Spider-Man failed to stop the robbers from escaping. Peter vowed to take them to justice so he started investigating and found a hint from one guy who will plan to take some things to deliver it to the buyer's location. It's an energy device looking thing that Peter planned to take as evidence to show Mr. Stark. The fight begins as Shocker punch Spider-Man and send him flying and drove away with the technology. Spider-Man chased the van and almost crashed to every neighborhood and still failed to arrest the bad guys. The only fortunate thing was he accidentally found the technology but decided not to tell anyone yet. As a science geek, his curiosity override his logic to give the dangerous device to authority or Mr. Stark. He wanted to know what's the technology supposed to do and it seems important to those bad guys. The next night, Spider-Man again chased the bad guys with the tracker on with the help of his best friend Ned, who caught him being Spider-Man in his room. The two decided to be partner in crime forward slash solving crime. Peter put on the Spider-Man suit and follow the bad guys. He didn't know that this third time and they are ready. Spider-Man suddenly got ambushed by someone who can fly and grabbed his foot and took off to the sky. The man who has wings and jetpack looked more bulky than the man he met during airport battle so this guy is different and more dangerous. Spider-Man's suit is designed to protect Peter so parachute automatically open when he reach a certain height and got saved by the winged person's clutch. But he still not safe as he didn't know how to fly and no buildings to swing on but luckily or unluckily he fall down on the river. The suit made it difficult to breath and he is stuck on the parachute while underwater. Fortunately, Mr. Stark sent one of his suit to save Peter from drowning. Peter is shivering while confronting Mr. Stark. How did you find me, did you put tracker on my suit? Mr. Stark I put everything in your suit, including this heater. The heater is a must as Tony experience walking in the cold night while escaping from his enemies. What were you thinking? Those guys have technology that looks dangerous, I gotta take the down. Peter argued. Tony take the down, these are law enforcement's job. Why don't you be more like? friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Tony is having a headache dealing with a teenager. Peter is still naive as he didn't seem to want to listen to Mr. Stark and wanted to work harder to prove himself to Mr. Stark and he can be useful as the Avengers. While Peter still didn't listen to Tony. Chasing the bird-like guy who plans to stole tech device but because of carelessness he got trapped to a huge facility alone waiting hours to go by so he can escape from here. Peter take the problem on his own hands to take down the bad guys as he still thought that being a superhero is fun thing to do. Getting on a ferry that the bad guys mounted on. He suit up and started searching for them and when he got to see them. Fighting ensued as he confronted the man with wings who seems to be the leader of the group as he has the most advanced technology and he carried the things away at the air like an eagle, but he doesn't look like an eagle so just call him Vulture. The fight goes to the point that agents and law enforcement got to arrest them both for their threat to the passengers. Tony called the law enforcement as he believes that Peter will not lie to him and to not endanger the kid by fighting criminals who used advanced technology so he let the police and agents take the bad guys but something unexpected happens. The device that seems to be the battery exploded with lights and beam that cut the whole boat in half. Peter immediately knows what to do but temporarily fix the boat so the people can wait for rescue. What a naive kid, he thinks that a few webs will fix the boat and save the people, that's what Tony thought as he was on the way while watching what Peter was doing. 
He arrived on time to fix the boat and took Peter away who again failed to capture his opponents. They both arrived on the rooftop of nearby building. Tony's confrontation with the teenager gave him a headache when Peter was on the puberty and rebellious age. Peter thought that being a superhero, he can get Tony's recognition and with the Spider-Man suit's assistance, he can do more things and become like Iron Man. Tony knows Peter's reliance on his Spider-Man suit and this will give confidence to take on all kinds of bad guys that has risked to kill him. Tony can't take the conscience of getting a kid killed by the weapon or technology he make like in the past. He took the suit away from Peter and take him back home to his Aunt May. Peter is getting anxious when both his school homecoming and the dad of his date is the guy who used the jetpack device that he is fighting. He found out a clue of his identity when he visited the home of his date. He thought the other side also knows him as the talk of Peter's often disappear when Spider-Man is swinging by. The same thing happened at the last fight, Spider-Man appeared and Peter's not on sight. Andrian Toomes had started to become wary of his daughter's date. Peter is smart enough that his identity could be seen through when more information about him is investigated but Vulture. Peter can't ask for Mr. Stark's help as he will be prohibited so he can only ask a friend he once met that has a chance coming to his rescue, Kane. When the call got through, Kane's voice is heard from the cell phone hello. He asked. Who is this? He doesn't seem to recognize my number. Kane this is Peter, Spider-Man we met at the airport battle. I thought you said I could give you a ring if there is something I need help with. Peter said. Oh Spider-Man, what seems to be the problem that you can't solve, did Mr. Stark take the suit back because you are mischievous? Kane's laugh is heard as he sounds confident that he guessed right when Peter is silent. So, is there something you need help with? Kane asks. Ah yes, there is a guy who used a very advanced tech that he got from Shitori Army from last New York battle, he's illegally manufacturing this technology and sell it to black market and they are stealing money from banks and taking other technologies to other people and I mean I failed to take them down and Mr. Stark also took the suit back so I can only ask you to help me fight those guys. Peter's way of talking is much more talkative but I filter most parts to only hear the important parts. Okay, I am near New York so where does this bad guys you are saying so I can directly fly there? Kane's voiced out. Peter is having second thoughts if he should let him finish his the job but he also want to be the one to take them down so he said oh, Kane, I'll be meeting you at Midtown High School. I think those guys are on the campus and we have a homecoming in our school so I'm also here. Peter immediately suit up to his former and less aesthetic Spider-Man suit to take those guys down with his best friend, Ned's help. The fight is very dangerous as the man who calls himself Shocker, have been punching him away several times, good thing he is more durable than normal people and he can take hits. Ned uses the webs shooter to distract Shocker and Peter took him down with the other webs shooter, took his tech thing and web him to the bus. Ned will get a computer to support Peter on fighting Vulture while waiting for Kane to help him. Our missions have been very successful since we left Wakanda with our new suit and equipments. The destination will be South America to raid a few dangerous cartel and illegal arms deal. The weapons that this illegal arms are from advanced manufactured that is considered deadly and the purpose is for mass destruction. We were thinking of continuing the raid onto the next location's target when I suddenly got called by an unknown number when flying on the way to Europe. Peter called for help and I let the others know and decided to just send me as I know Peter can handle this and I'm just there to support. I flew to New York at the speed of almost breaking the sound barrier. In the future, 
I can fly faster but not yet right now as I need time to improve naturally. Like I said, I don't have Kryptonian's genes so I don't have Superman's powers. I consider myself as variant of Super Soldier. But the difference in variation is that my physique has the ability to absorb solar energy from sunlight so I can have many use of that energy like making me stronger and recover stamina and also heal my wounds and manipulating the energy throughout my body to be able to fly, and focus that on my eyes for releasing powerful beam called optic blast. As I get faster, golden energy started to cover me up, and slowly but surely. My once simple clothes are changed into a black coat and silver white armor, the coat wrapped me but leaves some sort of long coat tails, and the coat had some golden lines forward slash runes as well for identification, which I don't know what it means, maybe Wakanda's language dot still, it is pretty cool. When I get to New York, I witnessed a plane going to crush to the city, shit, that'll kill a lot of people. What does that kid is thinking, fighting in the air with a guy who can fly? I saw Spider-Man using one of the wings turn it from the city into crashing it in the seaside. Like I said, I can't be Superman who unscientifically saved an airplane by carrying it while flying. I did not just watch the plane crashing on the seaside hoping there is no people in there as I only notice a guy that has flying device and Peter on top of the plane fighting. I flew to the bottom of the plane and help it turn so it won't plunge into the ocean. Using all my power to carry the plane not to let it cause too much destruction. We just manage to keep it hovering and and just mitigate the impact so that nothing explode on the inside. This plane will cause so much destruction if it suddenly explode and Mr. Stark will be blamed for this along with Spider-Man and Vulture. I did not let anyone see me clearly but both Vulture and Peter that someone is helping the plane on crash landing. I remember this should be a Stark Tech airplane full of Stark technologies that Vulture seems to want to steal. Keeper automatically recorded what is happening for me. I saw Peter crashed to Sandy Beach with flames on his surroundings and Vulture guy with his wings broken but jetpack is still working. This should be where Peter will learn an important lesson so I should not interfere unless he is really on danger of death I use all my focus on my senses to see every situation Peter will be involved on. The plane created a long road of fire and L mess on the seaside, I saw Peter and Vulture fighting as Adrian didn't seem to want to kill Peter but beating him up because of frustration. I understand him when wealth is already in your grasp but some teenager destroyed everything because he wants to be a hero. Vulture didn't take Peter's life but walked forward to arc reactors that he planned to take home as exchange for not taking the whole plane of Stark Tech. Adrian didn't notice his broken jetpack is too much damage and on the verge of exploding. Peter tried to warn him but his webs shoot a run out of web fluid so he can only plunge himself to fire to save his girlfriend's dad. Peter rescued Adrian and lay down to rest a little after the exhausting fight. He thought for a long time that he is already tired and really needed to rest. I flew down to the two's place and said Peter good job but you'll still get scolding by your dangerous stunt. And you sir. I know you I know the government and other big people are greedy especially alien tech but confronting them without proper power and you have family at home, you are full of weaknesses that's why you lose this time to a teenager who date your daughter I scolded him and laughed at him being defeated by his daughter's boyfriend. If I were him being on his situation, I will also do the looting from rich people SND take their technology to help myself. But I am a poor man relying only on mutation or something unlike these guys who relies on intellect and technology. Except Spider-Man who relies on both. The police and firefighters are coming so we leave Adrian on the ground for police and I send Peter home with his unusually attractive Aunt May. 
Peter should be called by Mr. Stark to give a nanotech Spider-Man suit but refuse as he learned his lesson to stay on the ground, be humble and friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. At the next day, my guess was right. Peter refused Tony's invitation but Peter who learned his lesson thought it was just a test. Tony and Happy just shrugged and I chuckled because I heard people on the other side of the door sounds like reporters and journalists waiting for Spider-Man to show up. When Peter left the building, Tony watched him proudly like his son grows up. Suddenly I spoke to him, Mr. Stark, it's not only Peter who did all the work, well most of it actually but I still save your plane from crashing and destroying everything. I reason as I also want reward. Okay, what do you want, you said you didn't do anything when the kid was fighting and you only help him go home. Tony said when he heard me. He asked for my help and I flew immediately, just in time to see him fighting on top of the plane so I help him to not let the plane crash in the city and I also let him fight his own fight but I'm ready to assist and save him if he needs to. I reasoned that me not interfering is for Peter's lesson. So, what do you want? Tony is generous enough to give any rewards. Do you also want to make you a new suit but your new look still look brand new and fit your taste perfectly? I want the whole building my girlfriend under our name my reward should be direct it's like wanting a house. The building apartment complex will be a good reward so I can have a own home and I plan to still rent the other floors so renovation is included. I'm not greedy right? I said while smiling. Your plane full of Stark tech is almost rob and also almost crash so it won't crash in the middle of the city. That's all, just a house. Yep. Okay, Happy should be responsible for that. You heard it happy. I'll take care of all of it happy reassured. Pepper walked in confused that she didn't see any Spider-Man so Tony create another news that is proposing to Pepper Potts in front of the press. Happy threw him the ring and hand signed OK. I nodded to Happy and flew to where Cap and the others are right now. At the same time in a country in the Middle East. Captain Steve and the others were fighting an army of mob that is suspected to be part of illegal human trafficking, organ trafficking, arms dealing and drug trafficking that was prospering in this country like a hidden king. The team eventually came to help the people when kidnappers tried to take Wanda and Lila while staying on this city. These unlucky encounter led to a more organized crime group that ruled this country for a decade. Frontally attacking was Pietro, Captain Steve and Sam while inside Wanda is wrecking havoc and Lila chasing those who escaped and plan to escape and Natasha to rescue the people while cleaning the documents and other similar things. I got a call that they were in the middle of fighting and I flew faster to join them and maybe there were some loots. I who don't experience the feeling of killing never got forced by the team to get my hands full of blood. Unlike the three who are soldiers, trained to kill and even if they are more lenient on this era, the atrocity this trafficking organization did has crossed the line of the group so Cap and the others didn't have to hold back from killing as everyone here deserves more than death but there are some that death is the only way as they can get out of prison using their hidden resources and connections to the law. Wanda and Lila who nearly got involved in kidnapping. If they are normal women maybe they will be just like others, helpless and weak to fight guys with guns and weapon to abused normal people who they think only as prophets. Now the two red vapor and white flash keep taking lives and bones of this scums and screams of threats and mercy didn't help alleviate the anger of the two women. As they thought that some people they trafficked for slavery and the organs they took for profit is inhumane enough that some of them maybe ask for mercy. Pietro you should get here faster, the women is still making a lot of mess to this people and you won't get any left over, Cap and the others didn't seem to have a plan to reproach the two and only you can calm them down. 
Pietro seems a little scared to Lila and wonder that they will kill everyone and Cap also told me to call me immediately so the two women can take a break. When Lila is done hunting, she joined Natasha and Wanda inside to rescue the people and slave workers from this place. Wanda's red vapor covered her whole body when I arrived, her powers is getting uncontrollably powerful due to her emotions getting out of her control. Her magic is eventually getting flexible that she looks like a flying turret with her red energy blast and telekinetic ability to lift people up to bang them to each other. I used my solar energy to cover myself in golden aura and flew fast to wander and hug her. What she needs right now is security, not from other people but from herself. Wanda's power came from Crimson Dimension so her Crimson Magic affected her slowly but surely and it changed her gradually until she falls to the Crimson Dimension's influence. Wanda, Wanda you're alright, just slowly breath and look at me. I comfort her slowly like a big brother comforting her sister. Wanda you are more powerful than that right? I asked her if she will respond. Wanda thought of something of my words and readily released her energy, I backed away for a few steps and let her do what she wants. Wanda focus her energy to be released up in the sky to not affect those on the ground. As she released the crimson magic from crimson dimension to the sky, it is a way of draining her body from its energy. The crimson energy is powerful but not as powerful as in the future that can manipulate the reality of the whole town. It is still powerful as the sky suddenly turn crimson for a few seconds and I carry Wanda to the ground. When Wanda look more normal, I talked to her about her situation as she seems to still continue but I stopped her as the fight is almost over. We saw the sky getting back to normal as we started to finish the rest. It is all right Wanda, you're not the only one who tend to get crazy, you know I have overloaded state that will be similar to yours but have slight differences but you know the meaning she listened to my explanation. Wanda can I really control this power, the more I did try, the more it resisted. Our power is just like that, we can't tame a tiger cub just because it is still small. I don't know where that come from but I continued. But we can control it by putting it on a cage or leash. Do you mean put a constraint on my powers? Wanda thought of something. Like the sorcery you mentioned. Suddenly we heard a voice from behind us, your power is much more powerful than you think and it's going to take more than just constraint. Ancient One said and continue the Scarlet Witch has the power to manipulate reality, it is the same ability as the reality gem that is one of the six infinity stones, treasure of the universe. Ancient One if you are willing to learn from me, I will teach you but I don't have that much time. Are you going somewhere? I asked because Ancient can be considered as powerful as Odin so she maybe just want to travel as she's been stuck on the sanctuary for hundreds of years so she maybe want to travel to other places or dimensions. No but for a few months, I will focus on teaching everything she wants to know. Ancient One suggested. But only if she's willing and she won't get to see you all for a few months. Can I talk to others first? Wanda only hesitated a little, but still think this is for her own good. We should discuss this to Cap and the others. Okay I agreed. We walked to Captain and Natasha along with Sam, Lila and Pietro. When they saw that there is one more person who looked like a monk from Himalaya's mountain, they used their eyes to ask us. This is Ancient One the supreme sorcerer of sorcery school and she protects the world from mythical creatures and other dimensional creature. My introduction is not too bland but I still said the main point. She said she can teach Wanda how to control her powers so Wanda should say something. Captain and, guys, I know my power is getting uncontrollable so I plan to learn sorcery from her so I thought I should let you know as a friend and family. 
Wanda voiced her thoughts to prepare her learning away. I can be more useful when I gain the power to mitigate my own power controlling myself instead. Cap be sure that you'll always be safe and remember that we are always here to help you. Natasha don't say you are useful for us because of our missions. Natasha observed her face and express. You are our friend, you're part of the team because we are family. Lila just hugged Wanda and patted her back. Pietro just hugged her sister and told her to always be careful and they will be waiting for more powerful and stable Wanda. Sam just smiled at her and said if you didn't come back for a couple of years, you will see your twin brother's child then. We just laughed at his joke but it is not impossible since Pietro recently found a girlfriend. Wanda hugged me and I just brush her almost crimson hair and tell her that careful and she can just come back if she's done. Ancient One smiled at our interaction to each other like a family and open a portal with sling ring and sparks showed a different scenery, the two women walked forward and said goodbye by waving. Now that we just finished the task, as we talked, the people have been cooperative and Natasha look for contacts with S.H.I.E.L.D. to take these people to authorities and help those in need to go home. The S.H.I.E.L.D. is more hidden now and Nick Fury is no longer the director. Phil Coulson lead the S.H.I.E.L.D. as the International Police Force task to interfere with supernatural events and extraterrestrial phenomenon. We must help these people until the end to deem this as complete success. The authorities that the S.H.I.E.L.D. send will send these people to their homes so this kind of thing won't happen to them again. Cap, do we have another task? I asked. As we get on the Quinjet, the team are exhausted except me who only did was fly here from New York for a couple of hours. We'll cool down to evaluate our situation as the UN is keeping track on us when we do missions on their influence. Steve said to the team. I don't want another battle happening again with the Avengers. Scott and Clint are house arrested, should we go visit Clint's house? Natasha mentioned Clint's circumstances. Being house arrest is in favor for Clint who retired to be with his family. As an agent who always need to be ready for deployment, being with his family on vacation is a time he cherish every year. We flew to Clint's house and we just landed in the morning, and inform Clint of our hangaround. Clint's family is very happy of us visiting to their cabin as Clint has been very good friend to us, even Pietro risk his life to save him years ago. We change for normal clothes as we were incognito so our uniform don't need to be announced to all people. The area around the house was forest and the nearest town is an hour walk so this is a safe place to stay for us and as Clint family accepted our stay as they didn't have much guests. I sat on top of the mountain nearby with Lila as we just train the technique of breathing under the sunlight. Lila have a new ability an extension of ability to be exact. She can now control the dagger light she's throwing as she will. This means that further in the future she can control a platform made of protons to fly around similar to Sun Goku's golden cloud. She kept training as to further her mastery on psychokinetic light weapon, I watched her training as she kept blinking around. I got up, dusted my ass and asked her. Should we spa, can I let you use your full power? She kept string at my eyes and got ready to fight. Her stance is full of weak points but she compensated that with speed and precision. I take the first move and didn't yet use my golden aura to pressure her but rely only in my superhuman physique and skills. I punch her guts but she suddenly disappear. I sense her from behind the tree and she kept moving from one tree to another. I chose optic blast to fire at her but her dagger keep getting added around me, she's asserting her domain around me to move like a flash continuously, well that's what I first thought. She also used different weapon according to situations as her light manipulation os getting serious. 
I use all my focus then started pressuring her to fight back at me. Optic blast and explosion keep the scared bird and animals away from us. She accumulated small wounds and I also have wounds but some heal due to our manipulation of energy to heal us while fighting. The fight continue for more than an hour and our clothes dirty but still have energy to fight. Our fight is not full power but I forced her to use hers to test her limit. Another hour of fight, our energy is exhausted but we resorted to hand to hand combat until her punches and blinking got slowed down and I corner her to the tree. I decided to punch one last time but she dodged and the tree behind her have a fist mark. She used one last dagger to try and stab me but I caught her wrist and threw her a little away and she's tired and cannot retaliate anymore. This is a good training for the both of us, we should do it more like this. I go inside the tent and grab two large towel and walk to her. We should get clean and dinner is soon. I grabbed her waist and lay her on my shoulder. She didn't refuse as a carry her to a small waterfall to wash our body. We plunged into the water to swim and float while relaxing our muscles. I took of all my clothes including underwear. We are already intimate as our relationship keep getting better day by day but we are not to the point of being boyfriend and girlfriend. We understand our circumstances so we just go to the flow like what we are doing now. Floating together side by side, we relax and sat on the stones to rest while water is flowing our bodies. Her back muscle is so sexy that I started massaging them with my hands, she accepted it and also relax. My strength is enough for her to feel her muscle being massaged at the right strength. When I get to the point of massaging her waist, she got startled and grabbed behind, I grunted as she grabs my dorm. I am currently fully naked so she grabbed it bare and she didn't let go and started stroking it. Her message is clear so I checked again the surroundings to see if anyone is nearby but there is only privacy so I let go. I continue massaging her thighs and she also massaged me between my thighs. The atmosphere is right and we got closer. I lean in 70% and she lean the rest 30% enough for our lips to touch. The kiss got more and more intense and not too long she's already naked. The things we did next is obvious and our body connected and didn't disconnected until two hours later. The resting and the fireworks are all done inside and the deed was done outside. This is our first together so wash and dress normally, then carefully got down from the mountain to eat dinner. The team are busy doing nothing just spending time together along with the kids. We chose to sleep in the tent while the others is inside the house. Our intimacy is not yet done as the night is still young, we got inside the tent while my tent down there needed to be solved. The whole night, the fireworks experience are all done inside so maybe we will get a child 9 months later. I've already been here for two years and I'm no longer young both in the previous life and here. Last month, I turned 23 years old and Lila is 25 years old. She's independent woman who is still living normally until those events happened. The situation on Wakanda is dire than normal since some insider is selling vibranium to Clow. Clow is a very greedy man who target the vibranium of Wakanda and sell it to the black market at a price of $10,000 per gram. The insider was Clow, one of the connections of Eric Killmonger, son of the late prince of Wakanda, Tishala's cousin. His father betrayed the Wakanda by revealing its existence to Ulysses Clow. He believes that Wakanda should take the mantle of strongest country and helping the people of Africa as well as share its knowledge to show the world. An American army trained as one of the best seal for the goal of taking over the Wakanda as its new king. He conspired with Clow to get inside the Wakanda then bring his head to the upper classes to be recognized as a prince of Wakanda and challenge Tishala for the highest position.
an ambitious man but also damaged that his country didn't extend a helping hand to their own people but also witnessed his father's corpse. Tishala received a news that vibranium metal is being exchanged on one of the Asian country. He asked the Dora Millage to go with him to take it back. When a certain robbery became public knowledge, Ulysses Clary surfaced back on Wakanda's radar, and due to the vibranium used in the Battle of Sokovia traced back to him, Shuri was given information that Clow was going to Bison, South Korea to negotiate a deal for the vibranium artifact with an unknown American. Tishala soon arrived at the location, and the site was definitely inside of underground casino. There were Dora Millage fighting alongside him, and he is literally covered in new nanotechnology suit that his sister made for him. Tishala then continued to chase the rest of the association with Clow and Dora Millage follows, while most passerby just watched the chase, and the two fought for a while as Clow had a new arm made from vibrant sheet or eye technology. Clow then jumped to one of the vehicle and quickly bolted off wanting to escape from the Black Panther. But Tishala didn't want to let him go as he was one of the most wanted man on their kingdom. Clow was imprisoned and interrogated by Wakanda and an American agent. Clow was still not afraid that he will be imprisoned for long as the chance of escape is coming. Eric Killmonger planned already how to get Clow out as his plan is coming to fruition that he is waiting for his whole life. The bombs exploded and Clow get rescued and one agent got injured on the spine. Wakanda decided to help him get treated to Wakanda for further treatment and started to track again Clow and his accomplices. About a couple of days later, Tishala got a news that Clow is dead and the one who delivers his head is someone called Eric Killmonger. His origin story is connected to the royal family, involving his father's exile and his abandonment, the Prince of Wakanda and T-Shaker's brother, Black Panther's fault of killing Killmonger's father and abandonment of him as a child of traitor on a country that discriminated his people, his heart would always be filled with resentment for Wakanda's disregard for loyalty and people's lives. Eric challenged Tishala for the highest position as Black Panther and Bast's champion, King of Wakanda. The royal family declined but the leader of the other tribe wanted to give Eric a fair chance and Tishala also want conclusions for their resentments and ideas. Tishala also thought that it is time to change their country and start contributing to the world as the world is changing faster than they thought. The fight will be a contest of strength that will be witnessed by the tribes and the winner take it all since this event or tradition has been held for millennium. Tishala needed to drink a suppressor to make him a normal person again without the power of heart-shaped herb. The two's confrontation is between a prince trained to be a warrior and king since he was born and a son of traitor trained in America's army and joined SEAL training and learn their battle tactics. One guy is killing to protect and the other is killing to take back what he thought he deserved and fight for revenge and resentment. The fight was intense, both training and experienced have made them both a great warrior and soldier. Black Panther Mantle have both different meaning to each of them. Using Tishala's vulnerability to his advantage, Killmonger went on to punch the Tishala, mocking him and the fact that he was too weak. Eric's arrogance have been influenced by where he grew up. In the end, Killmonger picked T. Shala up on his shoulders and threw him down the waterfall to his alleged death, leaving Eric Killmonger the winner and to be the new king of Wakanda. T. Shala had been training all his life doesn't make Killmonger a bad fighter. What do you think he had been doing all his life? He's a cold blood killer and had been trained by many special forces. Eric has been training his whole life for this moment. That's what Tishala had been doing, too. So we can come to a conclusion that both are more or less equal in combat skill. Now in that fight, Tishala had too much pressure on him. He knew Killmonger was right. He had the reason to fight him.
It's hard to fight someone when you know your foe is fighting for the right cause. At least it was hard for Tishala. On the other hand, Eric Kilmunga knew he was right. He was seeking his revenge. He is a man with good intentions but bad methods. He was ready to kill anyone who block his way if needed. But Tishala just can't kill his cousin like that after knowing what his father did. So, both of them had been training all their life. But Killmonger didn't have a super suit or an army. He had done a lot by himself. Killed a lots of people and made himself a pro fighter. I think he probably got much time for training as Tishala is a king, a scientist, and had to study a lot as he has PhD degree. Besides Tishala had hesitation during the battle. But Killmonger had his sense of revenge fueling him. That's a major reason he won. The whole kingdom is shocked by the news that there is a new Black Panther. The royal family left in advance as they are afraid of what Eric will do to them but as long as they don't oppose his rule, Eric will probably leave them be. Eric drank a liquefied heart-shaped herb to become a super soldier then proceeded to burn the garden of heart-shaped herb to prevent others from using it to fight him. One of Tishala's aide already took a core of heart-shaped herb for a new super warrior to fight Eric in the future. The royal family plan to escape to Mbeku to ask for help along with them was the foreigner. They thought of asking for Steve and the others for help but Eric already prevented them from calling outside help. They also knows that foreigners can't be involved in the affairs of Wakanda especially the royal family specifically the Black Panther. The Tishala they thought was dead was saved by one of Mbeku's men. The gratitude they felt will forever be remember. A few days later, Eric already began his plan. Inspired by the ideologies of his late father Njobu, Killmonger sought to incite a global revolution by arming ethnic minorities, specifically African Americans, with vibranium weapons so they could have the proper resources to overthrow their oppressors, including world governments to establish Wakanda as the sole reigning superpower. Killmonger secured entrance into Wakanda by presenting the corpse of the deceased Ulysses Klau, who had previously attacked Wakanda, to the tribal council. He seemingly killed Tishala in ritual combat, and was coronated as the new king. In his reign, he established an absolute monarchy. Tishala survived however and challenged Killmonger's plans just as he prepared to launch them, inciting a battle amongst Wakanda's military forces. The two Black Panther had a fight again but this time both use a Black Panther suit and can't hurt each other unless they use a vibranium technology to weaken the nanotech of the suit and strike. Tishala won because of his experience on fighting with Black Panther suit and his knowledge of combat with the heart-shaped herb. Because this time is different, Tishala have been influenced by many things earlier than supposed to be, he didn't chose to kill Eric but instead treated him and locked him to show him what the future Wakanda is with his ideas and influenced. In the aftermath, leadership was returned to Tishala. Inspired by Killmonger's initiative to share resources with the world, Tishala led Wakanda out of isolation establishing diplomatic relations with the rest of the world and vowing to share their resources. Our team supported Tishala on the aftermath of what happened and we are ready to help as long as Tishala ask and needed to without asking. The world again created a storm by the Wakandas surprised of its technology and resources as well as knowledge that they are ready to impart to the world starting from the African continent. A hidden superpower that a country so advanced that they can be considered the number one country in the whole defeating even the likes of China, USA and Russia but with these news many people also try to take the pie and that's where the team of us will move. The Avengers led by Captain started fighting in the dark to prevent a large-scale war due to fighting for natural and artificial resources that the Wakanda can provide. 
We fought daily with some days as rest and then again took missions for individuals and sometimes as partner missions. The chaos will be calm soon as long as they realize that attacking from secrets has no effects except wasting time and money. This is like fighting in Cold War. The exchange of Wakanda and other country are few in between ANS Wakanda focus on helping minorities for an African continent to establish the whole continent as an allies and a foothold and ALO the lines of defense for Wakanda. Stark Industry took the opportunity to partner up with the businesses of Wakanda to acquire vibranium metals for his new suits of armor. The most powerful Iron Man suit will be named Bleeding Edge as it will be the top of technology the world will ever witness as it is the Bleeding Edge suit of Bleeding Edge technology. For sure the announcements of Wakanda created a news that caused Storm but Storm is bound to move to other places. With the less news about the topic of Wakanda, the world came back to its right direction except Eric Killmonger is still locked up. I suggested to Captain Steve if there is ever a chance if Killmonger can join the team. Captain Steve still leave the decision to Tishala as he is the one who decides what to do to Eric. The Wakanda started taking back the country that the foreign country colonies. There are some conflict of interest but this type of fight is easily resolved by Tishala and his guards. The Dora Milage are scattered around the continent to support the minorities that have been oppressed for too long. It has managed to start a chaos on the USA as most African American people chose to side with Wakanda and some chose to still be an American citizen. Smart people will choose to protect themselves first before thinking of the whole nation. The vibranium metal is still being carefully managed by Tishala as he still doesn't have enough trust to other country except with the people it has partnership with. No matter how much he wants to be peaceful with cooperative relationship with many countries. As long as there are people who greed for their resources the emotions of humans will never have less greed, desire, envy and lust for power. The UN even considered of sending the Avengers team who signed the accords to negotiate for more vibranium metals and technology. Tony never considered being a dog of the UN along with Rhodes and Vision. Limitations and supervision doesn't mean control and tools. There are private army and mercenaries who tried finding the source of vibranium mine to take advantage of the nation's conflicts. We get to see how far other countries would take for fighting for wealth and resources as they kept sending people in secrets that we almost get exhausted just by beating this people back to where they came from. The kingdom of Wakanda is still hidden from the world. Even the top people of each country don't know they hide and what kind of technology they are using to hide from the satellite. They are afraid of open war as they don't have enough information on how much advanced technology and weapons Wakanda used in an frontal battle. The time passed and Wanda had been training for a few months already, she's still training meaning Doctor Strange is still in the sanctuary. We have again another vacation as we visited our girlfriends or lovers. Pietro found himself a woman who nursed him when he got injured on Africa while doing solo missions. She is a nurse who got involved with him when they met on a battle and nursed him and got to know each other for a few days. Pietro stayed in Africa to help and spend time with her during this period. She is an inhuman but he still didn't know yet. I probably let them know each other instead of being a nosy person from others' relationships. The unfortunate or fortunate thing is Lila is not pregnant as she manipulated her energy to take the sperm instead of directly going to fused with her egg cells. We should be more patient as we were still young and many things still wait for our adventure and journeys. We walked to the building who have already been renovated and named in our names. Krista and Aunt Helen greeted us on the door when we informed them that we are going to be home after a long time. The night is still young and we just ate dinner. 
We talked about many things while watching TV about Stark Tech Company being the first company to partner up with the Wakanda's businesses. The partnership is about studying new technology together on research departments. Everything seems on place when I got a call from Daredevil, wanting to meet up later tonight to discuss about raiding a church doing a live sacrifice to some god they believe. The church was found at the edge of suburbs when he was visiting some clients during his work as a lawyer. The Defender team has already tried attacking but got repelled by some reinforcements from the church that uses some kind of magic to deal with them. Lila and I left the building in the middle of the night with our uniform as we're no longer afraid because of our reputation has been known already during Wakanda's announcement. Our mask is almost identical except for minor difference of longer horns and shorter horns. Her white windbreaker wrapped her body while she is standing on a circular platform to support her flying in the sky. Not yet as flexible and literal flying but still assist her in floating in the air. Her fastest speed in flying is just jogging for her on the ground. Lila, have you tried maybe make a wings on your back like an angel? I asked her while my eyes never left her. That'll be so cool like you're a war goddess. You know that the larger the item I manipulate the harder it is for me to focus. She answered. I will try that in the near future when I can control more light weapon. We talked as we flew to the location Matt gave to us, on the way we stop a few mugging, thievery and even raping, that unlucky individual got his asset cut off by Lila and the victim even kick him in the head while screaming. That will be his nightmare for being an as asterisk asterisk ole and unlucky. When we reached the location we saw people that were talking about the plan on how to attack again the evil church. We flew down and introduced ourselves to the defenders of this city. Hello guys, my name is Kane and this is Lila we are our UD to help you solve the problem of that evil church. First of all, I think, the evil church has connections to some sorcerer who escape with a page of a forbidden book. I first gave them light information. These guys uses magic or technically it is a sorcerer who uses technique learn from a temple. I don't have time to explain all of it so just summarize it. This evil church is praying for a god of dark dimension to grant them power but there's a catch to getting this power that is a slavery. One you get your wishes for power and magic. The soul will be a nutrition for the dark dimension. The dark dimension is literally what I said, nothing but darkness and its god. These priests probably got the help of someone named Kieselius or maybe his subordinates. We can defeat them but it will have to be quick as they have sling ring that can allow them to create a portal to escape. Don't ask me how, I am not sure myself. Do we need to follow your lead? Jessica Jones asked, a pretty white woman who hate men especially the man who control and abused her. No, you just need to do your work and we'll take care of the rest. I nodded to Matt to sign that we are ready but forgot that he's blind so I awkwardly said. Let's go, Matt lead the way. The suburb is quieter than most of normal nights. People immediately hide to their houses, scared of us doing illegal things. The church has lights on so I hope this is just tonight, I don't to get back and forth to come back to this creepy church. The live sacrifice will not happen every time but only when to avoid suspicion from the police. The priest will start the process of sacrifice and we attack immediately while waiting for the reinforcements the priest called. That's it guys. Hope you like the video. Like share and subscribe the channel. Also make sure to tell me your recommendation in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching.